like between the three of us, we're looking at between 150k to like 200k, la, right? Percent, for okay. for the final for 500,000. I agreed, and I had no idea how I was gonna find the money. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. So that's the truth, and I now I believe that you know if you, so how how I actually found the the starting capital. So I I did save from the beginning. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Yum Chao Sessions. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> My name is MC Black. Oh, wow, we're doing the intro. Oh, fuck Let's man. do it again, you know? Okay, mm. I'm John. Sorry, bro. Yeah. He's MC Black and I'm John. And this is Kenneth Tan. Yeah. Who Kenneth is? Tan. Hey, introduce yourself, my brother. Introduce myself. Introduction. <laughs> yeah. I think you have to go a bit closer to the mic. I bet you see that coming. Oh, you can right. pull the mic nearer to you also. I think. Yeah. Okay. okay uh. Yeah, it, what, how would you like, introduce yourself, Ken? Yeah. I have no idea. But um, we go to SMK Swiss at Tava last time. So, so yes. Not so tough. We need to restart that shit. <laughs> not <laughs> restart this shit. Yeah, welcome back to your just <laughs> <laughs> Welcome I'm not, back. No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm not. I'm, I'm going to cut that fuck out. No. <laughs> yeah. The one that was like, what the fuck? <laughs> this guy clearly <laughs> doesn't fucking That's what I told him too. Like, okay. Clearly, you don't pay fucking attention. <laughs> no, I always say the same thing every in podcast <laughs> we always say satapa okay okay so, so a bit of context yeah. uh since i don't know like, maybe like awkward or whatever right we don't have to introduce right i haven't done the introduction for a long, long time, so, but yeah. i'll just do the favor of introducing ken okay <laughs> ken is the owner of merchants lane dungun and wildflowers if i'm not mistaken now no more dungun no more dungun yeah. really what so, the fuck so the business oh shit yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. So, so i'm left with two there's merchants and wildflowers oh cool, yeah yeah cool, cool. And, previ- and previously the proud owner of chaplang where we started off <laughs> young Josh sessions as well so yeah <laughs> man at the outside part when the time can still smoke and but we were talking about how okay, yeah, <laughs> but we were talking about at that time like how you cannot you shouldn't smoke outdoor or should smoke or some fuck like that yeah, yeah. I remember Ew. but yeah that's a fun fact for you guys uh, we will dive right into it so in the beginning in the beginning in the beginning <laughs> <laughs> when we were studying at SMK 3 Setapak right yeah mm. did you always know that you wanted to do F&B again actually no lah to be fair I think it's quite obvious to me after I when I started working part time so that was basically first year uni. That's like Sunway, right? Eh? Yeah, when I was twenty one. So that's like eight eight years, nine years ago. Oh. Yeah. So when I when I was in uni, I worked part time in a cafe. Okay. And then after working for like probably a couple of months, I just like fuck like um, Is it butter and beans? No, no, no. Oh like standing theory. Oh standing theory. I don't know if you guys heard before. I know, cafe. I know, I know. It's yeah. nearby the tapa. Right? It's yeah. in it's in no no, it's in PJ. Oh fuck! It's a like an OG, yeah, 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 OG yeah, yeah, like. So you after they close you, already? Yeah, close already. They recently closed. Yeah, 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 few years ago, close yeah. yeah. Oh shit, man! Fuck! Yeah, I yeah. think I only been there like once, damn long ago. That was like my second ex or some shit. It's but quite big one, right? Like, it's quite big lah. Like, and then they were famous for like that waffle with like bacon and waffle syrup. Waffle and bacon. Yeah, yeah. Oh fuck! Back man. then they were like the OG like cafe hipster la. cafe back then lah. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. That was the trend post burger trend or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah possibly. Yeah. Yeah. That was like this whole burger trend. Then every do burgers all over SS15. Then after that, it became the cafe trend. Yeah. Right? That, that was actually the beginning of like the cafe trend actually they yeah. were one of the few I would, I would consider them one of the few like the pioneers of yeah the, pioneers of like the cafe hype whatever yeah, you call yeah, it yeah. Yeah. fuck man I forgot yeah, they yeah. even did cold brew at the time yeah yeah like exactly this. yes correct yeah. fuck wait I've never been there before yeah. that was damn long ago <laughs> yeah. it's quite dim one the lighting yes correct, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. okay okay so you did uh, part time there like as a barista or no like, I just did service I was like I was learning about coffee while okay. I, they, they were like Back then, they were like super like generous in terms of like, like teaching me about like like coffee, about business in general. The boss like them nice guy lah. Oh, what's his yeah. name? Okay, can say. Uh, Peng. Peng. Yeah. Oh, then, fuck. That's them. Like, yeah, them Chinese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. What's yeah. Peng. Yeah, but he's not China man lah. So. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. okay, okay. So you did like a couple of months then while you're studying? No, I was like working a few years lah. So after, oh, I, after I started, I was like, okay, it's like simple. I need to save money. So I hope my dad is not hearing this lah. But like, so back then, I was like, I was just working after, like I, I missed my classes mostly in uni so I didn't really study <laughs> I just skip classes and then I just go work right and then I was like okay I need to save money because like I need to do this business I want to open my own shit right uh. so so it's like I just worked there save all the money there like 
And then I, like constantly, my dad just think I'm going out because he don't know school, I'm la. he don't know I'm working la, actually. Uh. He think I going CC or something. <laughs> like so I, actually, like this, like it's probably quite an interesting time. So he thought like he keeps telling me like, hey, don't go out so late. But I work there, so like I Maybe finish at like late. Yeah, I come back late all the time. So he assumed I was like, you know, kind of like this late parking and stuff like that. Uh. So I keep telling him not enough money. So I took more money from him, <laughs> and then I saved that. So I think that that kind of like. That was like the initial bunch of money that I kind of started with. La. I see, I see. Yes. Hey, what were you studying at the time? Uh, I did marketing and economics. I did mm. a bachelor in business and commerce. Oh, mm. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were working there while doing... Study. While doing my degree, correct. Did you graduate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surprisingly, yes. <laughs> yeah. If anything, life <laughs> lesson... Only can say that yeah, with yeah. a fucking straight face. Yeah, no <laughs> issue. <laughs> <Lesson of God. laughs> fucking no <laughs> issue. Yo, yeah. Ponte class, everything. Still pass. Yeah. Oh, so you worked there for like a couple of years full-time? Or like, something, like for at least a good three years plus. Uh. Oh, like fuck. I was I was considered part time because I couldn't commit the day hours. I see, I see. But I could commit like every week I'm like fixed four or five days a week. Sort of full time. Yeah. That's almost full time. I'm like a fixed part time uh, fi- fixed part time. Uh. Full time part time. Yeah, uh. yeah, yeah. Oh. A full time. So after part-time. those three years and after you graduated, is yes. that when you went to Butter and Beans or Yeah, so after I finished like my degree, right? It's like while waiting for like my convocation, is that what it's called? Mm, yeah, convocation, oh. right? So I essentially was just like, I was looking for like a corporate job first. Mm. That was the plan, right? And then after that, while I was working for like applying for jobs, then I passed by like butter and beans back then. Then I passed by, I was like, hey, shit, like new cafe opening here, right? Which is fucking rare because yeah, yeah. it's in Satapa. Correct, yeah, yeah. yeah so bro. then I was like, okay, la, just like maybe I'll just do this part time, right? While I get my corporate job. So then I worked for my boss back then which is my partner now right Ken, so, uh, yeah that's how that's his how name I, is also ken yeah that's how i actually knew him uh. that's oh, how i knew him so okay. he was more he was he was my boss in the beginning and then like i worked for him for like one month two months i told him like temporary like part-time <laughs> and then he told me like I, I i did tell him my plan of opening my own place uh-huh. so i told him like you know i'll just work for you part-time first but you know i probably go corporate and then maybe like the business my own business will be later mm, uh. i see yeah but then after that we talk, 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 kind of like, I told him, okay, maybe I work for you full time. <laughs> so I told my dad, like, I'm working in the cafe. He kind of supportive, he didn't mind it. I was like, my pay is obviously less than like, you know, a corporate job would probably pay me. Mm. But then I did it anyway. And I gave myself like a one year time frame. I was like, look, if within this one year, I was like, if I'm going to open a business, then it has to be within this one year. If not, then, then I'll probably go back corporate. Yeah. I see. What was the position in the cafe at the time? Barista. Yeah, I was, I was the barista. barista yeah. I see. But so, then you mostly have to do everything. Or not. Yeah, you kind of do everything. And then like, at that point in time, it's like, because I was like, I was already learning about it for like, you know, three years plus. Yeah. So it's like, I'm probably like the most experienced true in the la, cafe. True, true, true. Because like my, my boss back then, obviously they, they had no prior knowledge about. Huh? You know, yeah, yeah, just yeah. open only. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. You, you didn't know, right? Ken is a computer engineer. So... <laughs> He, he worked finance in, in, in Sydney and Hong Kong. Uh-huh. And then he burnt out. La. Came I back. See. That's why I started the cafe. Hey, but Butter and Beans, if I'm not mistaken, is a chain, right, at the yeah. time? Oh, so I actually, think it still is a chain. If yeah, I'm not so everybody, a lot of people don't realise, but we were actually a franchisee. I see. Yeah, we were actually a franchisee. Oh. Yeah, so the we OG bought the, one is BJ, right, I think. Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Happy Mansion. Ah, it's still yeah. open now? It's still there. Yeah, it's still there. Still there, still there, still there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're a franchisee. Yeah, yeah, we're the franchisee. Oh, fuck. So I remember that time. I think I spoke to you or Ken la, I yeah. forgot. Although I both hey, the same name. I know both the same name. Then I actually got one more guy named Ken also. Yeah, now I got another guy named Kenny. Ken, oh, relax yeah. with the Ken name. <laughs> oh, you're too many guys. Too, too many. I remember but, I was having a conversation with you or him. Right. Then I remember he was saying he's a franchise. Then after that he would take over as his own, la, if I'm not mistaken. And that's when the birth of Chaplang, la, right? Yeah. So after that, that was after we opened Merchants lah. So oh, is it? They, had, they we only converted the name after actually. Oh, mm. Chaplang was actually for quite a short period of time. Which actually. is fucking sad. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking sad, bro. After Chaplang, no close already, no. right? I feel like I don't even know where to edit. <laughs> the coffee is so fucking shy. That, that was, was the cafe beside there. No, it was White Rabbit. Oh bro. yeah, I remember. Fucking I remember, I remember. BS cafe, bro. <laughs> That one, right? He told me, right? He make damn good fried rice. I'm like, I believe him. The fried rice damn good, but fuck it. Wait 45 minutes for fried rice. 
That's why it's good. That, that was the guy who didn't really care when he wanted to open, not open. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, he said he wanted to open every day. <laughs> he wanted to open from what, 12 to 12? It never happened. La. Yeah, bro. <laughs> then I was like, wow, this guy damn ambitious. He bought lock, stock, and barrel also, ma. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He yeah. bought it over. Then I thought, okay, la. then he renovated it to a, like, a wall there. Yeah, yeah, he did a wall. Uh, I don't know. La. After that, it's just a double down. Now it's a, a what? You do the the, the food one, what? Tita. Tita. Uh, tita. Tita bit, right? Huh? What? Tabib, right? What's Tabib? Tabib. Like a uh, Chinese... Uh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The food thing. La. Yeah, yeah. Bro. A reflexor told you and I don't know what. La. what Something. Because yeah. yeah. my colleague, the other day, fell into Long Kang. So he brought him there. What? Why oh, did he fell into Long Kang? <laughs> we go buy cigarettes, then he fall into Long Kang. Nice. Yeah, because yeah. I think that night he pulled an all-nighter, then he cannot like see properly. Then I was like, hey, I go buy cigarettes, you chill first. Then he like, no, I follow you. I will so go buy cigarettes. Then he fall into Long Kang. Convenient. Yeah. Mm. Just there. So like, I was like, hmm. Maybe deep down quite lucky because I don't need to carry him so far. <laughs> quite sad uh, the fact that he fell out of the gun. I know, right? Okay. Uh, plan, before we go to the business element, got yeah. one more question. Uh, did any part of your education right, help you with your current, like, mm. although you missed out on, on Classes. Uh, a good amount of <laughs> class? <laughs> yeah, pretty sure I did. Uh. But do you think it helps with the business sense now uh, that you have with owning these couple of restaurants? I cafes? think short answer no. La. Huh? No, yeah. straight up. Short answer no. La. I think mostly most of like the business things can be learned like firstly and that like pa- partially if you talk about like more technical stuff possibly like marketing kind of like it's applied to any form of business mm. like, you know? probably that's the only part of it and like some people could argue you could get some connections while studying i think that's a bigger part than actually like the, the education true, part true, of it yeah true. it's because you meet a lot of people at that specific place at Correct. a specific age meeting then, people actually gives you opportunity actually bro when, yeah. yeah it's true it's true you never know who you meet so like actually the more people you meet generally more opportunities on the side note right don't you think it's kind of fucked up right the older you grow right it's damn hard to meet like a girl to date because when you're working right yeah you only date oh either people you work with yeah or your friend like say, hey, got this girl single. Yeah, a mutual up. Uh, that, uh, that's probably it. It's damn hard, yeah. bro. Yeah, I know a lot of single people now, right? It's because that time they had a boyfriend girlfriend, then they like broke up after uni. Yeah. Then they hard to find find new people. Already. Yeah. Because your your circle of friends is there. Already, it's then it's hard to branch out. Actually, very hard to branch out. Once you start working, it's it's difficult. Yeah, man. You, you need a routine. You meet so much less people. So that's why I say like during uni. Just Definitely, that's the time you meet the most people. Actually. Yeah, no. I think that's mm. probably the best opportunity. La. Yeah. Okay. The only opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> not the only. only. There's fucking Tinder and shit also. La, but it's just not like the <laughs> organic way of meeting people. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be organic. Yeah. It's quite forced. Lo. You have to go on a date or Facebook dating or some fuck. Yeah. I didn't even know Facebook had dating. Facebook had dating? Yeah. I didn't know that too. What? Yeah. Maybe don't need la, okay? No, my friend was just, that guy who found the Long Kang told me <laughs> that. Oh, that was like goddamn. Kind of know. I didn't even know Facebook can meet people now. <laughs> Fuck man. Okay, you said you were working at the time for like two years as standing theory, right? Well, three years, three plus. Three, three plus. Yeah. Button beans how long? Button beans was just under a year Because then long? after that, I started my own business already. Merchants, oh? Yeah, I started merchants and then subsequently after that, we merged the business together. So that's why how I actually owned Chaplang at the time. Oh. Yeah, because initially I did not own Butter and Beans because I was just working. And then subsequently when we opened merchants, we decided it was easier to just merge the business together. Because so that if you do supply all that, so easier. It right? gets, yeah, generally it gets complicated when you have two separate entities. So we decided to just join under one company. How yeah. did you open Merchants Lane? What do you mean how? I mean like, what was the process you know like you were just one day in uh, Chaplan Cafe or Butter and Beans where yeah. you're like you know what it's time so like I was constantly because I had the one year time frame that I put in my own mind mm. so I was constantly looking for places la, just generally scouting for places and opportunities in general like shop lots yeah yeah just like looking at places like if it's for rent I might just call the guy like go take a look I've been I, I did that for probably about six months or so mm. yeah it, and it was not exclusive just to like to working with my partner I was like I was talking to people other than my partners as well like, oh, like my potential current, other yeah potential partners. other people who may want to open with me mm. uh. yeah so I was constantly looking at it like, until of course we saw merchants law, and then we saw the lot it was obvious to us, like, although it was a very big risk like, at, that, at that point, <laughs> seemingly. If you guys know how it looks like when, <laughs> when we took it. Yeah. I actually remember the conversation. It's like vivid. Every time I go to Merchant Stain, right, I yeah. will remember the conversation I had with you. you know, We were right. both having a cigarette at Chaplan Cafe. Yeah. And you told me, John, I think I want to open right, this cafe. right. 
in Patanik Street. I'm like, what the fuck? Are you fucking serious, uh, bro? You must be crazy, dude. It sounded like, it, yeah. it sounded damn crazy, I must admit. Yeah, yeah, I was like, they why Patanik Street? It's like, no, I think uh, this is an attraction to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People will go there. I'm like, I even haven't gone there. <laughs> <laughs> fuck knows no, when. You know, KL people goes to Patanik Street. Yeah. Like, prior to, like, like more than six years ago, like before merchants opened. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It Nobody was, I there. think, the movement, right, that created this whole, like, Pataling Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now it's like hype already. Yeah, Pataling Street is hype. Atas. Yeah, yeah. It's Atas as fuck already. You yeah. go there, it's like one flowers, you got Master State, you got PS150, you got everything there. Yes. All the big easy bars are there. It's all there. Then you're like, what the fuck? Now it's an attraction, like, how, I guess, like, Bangsa would, would be. Yeah. We just go to Pataling Street, right? There is yeah. this, uh, like, mural thing also, right? Yes, yes. What is it called? Koi Tai Hong. Ah. No. Is it a so Chinese restaurant, is it? No, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a street where they did, oh, like, know, the street know, art know, and shit. Yeah. I, I, I saw that. Yeah. They actually took enter a lorong. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. They yeah. redid the whole part there as well. So it's like yeah. really making that place nice again. La. Yes, yes. at night, right, last time you go, right, if you just look at the fucking shop lot uh, and you look at the, the staircase up, right, yeah. confirm you see prostitute. It is. It confirm. is. Now still gone or not? They Some all went out of business because yeah. now the, it's mo- the prostitutes, they, the prostitute houses or the brothels are all meant for like the foreigners. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So I'm, I'm talking about people who like, you know, the foreigners who work there and stuff like that. It's like cheap brothels in general. Aye. So now like yeah. Chinatown is dead, like it, as in like the middle of Chinatown is dead. So, all of them went out of business as well. Oh, she Together with like MCO, essentially. Yeah, man. Damn. Yeah. That time I walked by, I looked inside, then he said, Thai, man. Then I'm like, yeah. fuck, Whoa, man. Relax, relax. <laughs> I'm like, almost lost a kidney, bro. <laughs> fucking, bro. <laughs> <laughs> fucking scary. <laughs> you, almost lost a, you almost lost a kidney, man. <laughs> 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 no, like, I think there's the there's a scariness at that time, but then the, the appeal changed, really. Now it's like yes. people lining up for fucking speak easy at yes. PS150. Everybody's just waiting outside to go in. The it's whole mad, place like. has uh, dramatically changed, actually. Yeah, man. Dramatically. It's mad shit too yeah. much lah. It's mad yeah. shit. And it's still fucking hard to find parking. Yeah. yeah it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> There's one But now got hotel already, right? Yeah, yeah. You Opposite. Could, you could yeah. park there. You can park there already. Yeah. Uh, what was the concept of Merchant State at the time? Like how did they come up with? Like, yeah, because I'm pretty sure... Okay, you know right? Last time uh, when you go to a cafe, right? Yeah. It's fucking like either industrial yeah. or like... Stone, I don't even stone. Know. Or like... Cute, cute that shit lah. Yeah, or yeah. you even go even further, right? It's like those you know, club or UG yeah, yeah, or like yeah. some kind of club Bukit Jalil and then there's this deli, there's this like restaurant inside there, yeah. serve mushroom soup to like fried rice that shit. Yeah. That is the concept of a cafe. Yeah. So either those three. But then what was the direction when you all decided to make Merchant's Lane? So actually like, I think the a lot of the design aspects of Merchant's came from partly us and also a big part of it came from our designers. Oh shit, you're hired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hired a designer. And, and like the hiring of the designer was like a complete fluke, actually. I, I met my designer in, in Butter and Beans. <laughs> he was my customer. He came in and then I was talking to one of my colleagues. I was like, oh, you know, here's the plan. Like, I'm going to open this place, right? Uh-huh. In Chinatown, in Pataling Street. And then he's like, hey, you guys looking for a designer? The idea. Yeah, yeah. He oh. was the he was he my literally idea. Literally just yeah, yeah. came. He was like he was my customer and he heard me talking about it. And then he oh, was like eavesdropping. Right? Yeah, and then he's like, You guys looking for a designer? <laughs> and then like, I guess the re- the rest is history. Like. I guess so, the moral of the story is eavesdrop. But what was the I'm I'm pretty sure when he proposed yeah. a theme of sorts, like what was his pitch way? Like was it like we want to use I don't know, local elements. Like, I'm sure oh man, the guy was he, like they are so creative. It's it's, it's almost like the, the the concept was crazy. Like we didn't even think about it. Honestly, uh-huh. like he pitched us like it was like vintage plus complete like polar contrast of like vintage just in like super modern funky colors. Uh-huh. So you can see like there's pink, there's like neon, there's pop- yeah. There's a lot of elements inside that is just completely. It, it will feel to a normal person out of place. Yeah, but that was the that was the idea. We we when we saw it, we really liked it. I have no idea how it was gonna look like. Yeah, I thought he would render a tree. Yeah, yeah, he would. But he during didn't. like the initial deck was this like concepts like rent like photos and uh-huh. like, like like mood, mood board boards, la. like yeah, uh-huh. mood boards, right? So like we could get we could kind of grasp how it was looking like. But before you actually proceed to the three D renderings and all this kind of thing, you have to proceed with them really because they won't do the work before doing like because they charge you for the render. Yeah, yeah. So they would you would essentially put in money and pay them a certain amount to proceed to that level already. So we 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 liked it from the beginning. And then all they said was like, if you guys are willing to trust us and do do it like the the design that we proposed to you, 
they say it'd be great. La. And then we, we liked it actually. So it was it was out of the ordinary for sure. But we really liked it. La. So we're like, okay, we only want to comment about the practical side of things, <laughs> la, right? So you know a lot of designers. Knowing can, no, right? Yeah. Knowing <laughs> can. Which can, which can? The the, My the older, older can get yeah, yeah. an engineer. So he told me about sous vide all that. Then I'm like, yeah. wow, it makes sense. Like the lot the, the, the what is like logical and necessary we kind of intervene but the rest of the design things we let them essentially oh, like free for all uh, essentially that's a damn good client bro yeah. most clients all like yeah. Yeah. some clients are they want to like have their own this own that then it yeah. kind of like fucks everything up like. how long did it took to this come up with this design it was like quite fast like the first few design like um proposals that they had were quite quick and then we didn't really like divert from it so we actually this minor changes. We went there and see the place. We brought them to see the place. They're like, okay, I want to do this. I'm like, that time got three there as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So the one of the big reasons why we actually knew that we had to take the place was because of the tree. Because of the tree in the middle, like how many shop lots has a tree in the middle? Has a tree in the middle of the shop? Uh, one only, I know. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know a mall that has a tree inside. You, you could plant a tree inside, but yeah. naturally a Don't tree have. inside unlikely. Yeah. But fucking hard, bro. Yeah. You know, right? I know, fun fact, uh, my mom was there and then her khaki dropped. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All the way down. And then I'm like, oh my fucking god, la, mom. Why la? She dropped the khaki there. Because it's a uh, wood paneling. Oh, yeah. you. And then, like metal grating. So much she damn. The handbag, la. No, so much she damn careless, one. She always just put everything on the table, touch shit. Uh. You push it down, it goes uh, all the way down. Yeah. Can, can you take it back? Yeah, okay. I can. Uh, thank god. Can, but, 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 yeah. la. It's in PS, uh. So don't do it, lah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I've, I've actually redone the whole floor, you know. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. So now you can. Now it's just purely wood, so the gaps are small, like this. Because of the incident, lah. So actually, because of the law. <laughs> no, because of. <laughs> but okay. Yeah, yeah. Wait, a, a very important question. Yeah. Who is the one who brought that hanging chair? The hanging chair, my designer. Mame. He insisted that <sighs> this is needed. This he, is... he told me like. This place is this thing. I'm like this. Pl- this thing is complete waste of like you know, like potential customers sitting and paying money for it. He was right. I was wrong. Yes. I put it in. I put it in recording. Yes. You know, Chaplang that time. Yeah. I also told you, you need a hanging chair. Over there. Yeah. I told you this, bro. I told you this, Ken. You just need photo op. Cause girl want take photo, then they post on Insta. They tag your location. GG free marketing, bro. Yeah. yeah. You just need a photo. You know that that I forgot. Is, is it? Is it? What you know that that yellow color cafe? Oh yeah 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 yeah. What the fuck oh, is it called? It's like the light thing, right? Uh, they paint the wall. One. What's that? Yeah. Uh, I remember. It's called Thursdays. Uh? Thursdays. Yeah. Uh, with Thursdays. the V. Yeah. Uh, Thursdays with the V. It's in BJ as well. Yeah. When they do that, it's like everybody markets for them for free, right? Yeah yeah. Because they want to like, oh, it looks so cute. It's so unique. Then they post for you. Hanging chair. Yeah, hanging chair. It bro. is true, and that's what probably Chaplan lacked. Yeah. A photo. Oh. Yeah. But then again, right, I think that area uh, yeah. is damn hard, la, bro. It's yeah. China fuck. La. Yeah, it's a difficult business and I, I realised that over time. La. They, you know, right, yeah. when you see uh, lunchtime and you look at the other like establishments, la, like shop lot, yeah. cafe or restaurant, Zero. they die, man, compared to fucking juking or the kopitiam. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They pawn, bro. The, the site... No, uh, Ju Hing, you know, the, the copy jam where we buy all the champing and all that shit. Yes, yes. Bro, their business is banging, bro. Bro, every day. Yeah, man. <laughs> Do you know yeah. the same owner, right, of Ju Hing, right, opened yeah. the up opposite that one, the opposite The Chapan, PH, the PH Chapan PH one, is it? Huh? I didn't know. Oh, no. That, you know, like, upscale. The upscale chap, chap, Chapan rice No, no, rice, no, no, no Chapan already. Huh? It's a copy jam. No, it's a copy jam, yeah. Oh. It's like old town style, but yeah. they serve pork. Ooh. Yeah, I, I forgot what is it called already. But I don't remember the name. Yeah, but they also pack, you see. Oh, me. I didn't know it's owned by that guy. Yeah, man. Because I was like, so how? Business? He was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I own it also. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fuck, man. Mad shit. <laughs> hey, oh, wait, wait. The design part, right? Yeah. I feel, this is more of a comment than a question. I feel, right, that has set the standard for cafes, like, if you ask me. Because now, right, I still can't find a cafe, right, that has those type elements. And I think, honestly, it was to me it's a bit local. Mm. That's why it's an attraction. Because that's why it's like tourists come, they also feel like they're at a local. Yeah, yeah. I think cafe. because the our design our, our pitch was like Malaysian 
Because oh, our oh, food was also Malaysian fusion, so yeah, no. Malaysian was part of the, the the design that we wanted also la. So that's why like the rattan, the wood, yes. some of the metal, those elements. Yeah, mm, I think plants. yeah, it, it it it's it is what actually at that point in time was nothing similar to us la, actually. We were quite different la, when we started the yeah, place. Yeah, man. Yeah, I still think today is damn different though compared eh? to any, every other cafe. It's unique in a certain sense. All the cafe always going to the minimalistic. Minimal, yeah, minimal, 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 yeah, damn minimal. minimalistic now. Like it's like but, clean. No. But it's a copy paste though. Every every other place, yes. yeah. concrete floor, concrete wall, or light or white. That's it. Kind yeah. of like the one in Mutiara. What's it called? Bean Brothers, ah. Uh. Uh, yeah. Oh, very similar to that feel. Like there's industrial and there's minimalistic. Yeah. yeah it's, that's what Quite a lot of people. Uh. Yeah, a lot of people do that lah, cause it's the Cheap. obvious thing to do and it's visually pleasing to a certain extent uh. People don't dare to go the extreme actually. Yeah. 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 Actually, yes. even wildflowers is not what not you would normally extreme, see. It, it, but it's, it's still not similar to any other place. La. I, I, would, I, I would think it's the plants, bro. That's why it's damn hard to maintain. Yeah. But it's still unique to a certain sense. Mm. I didn't... Actually, wildflowers are more skeptical about like how it would turn out. Actually, I have no idea. So, but Same designer? Same designer. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's a bit more modern. La. Yeah, definitely more modern. Because we felt like in Chinatown, it's like... There's too many people going like vintage, especially like the the more traditional kind of business, like the copy tiams. Mm. They try to go vintage because the building looks vintage. So we wanted to go the total opposite of that. So that's why Wallflowers became like this purely modern and basically a contrast to what Chinatown is. Uh. So more corner look. Yeah. Which yeah. I know stands out. So the only thing that is not modern essentially is the facade. That's, that's basically it. Everything else inside is redone in a modern style. Actually, outside also quite modern. Right? Can mm. see lah. The, the theme is black, grey. Yeah. But outside it's just white and it's still. It's the wall. Uh, it's just yeah, yeah. white wall. It's, and it's the original wall lah. Lie oh. to me, right? Is this this lie to me? Yeah, lie to me again. Lie to me again. <laughs> again. Yeah. again. Still lie to People me. People love it lah, you know. Sometimes you hear oh. lies and you still want it. So good lies <laughs> like you know. Not lies like Puyo Ta, you know. Actually, how did you decide on the cuisine for uh, Merchant Lane at the time? Uh? Mm. Oh, like... Nah. First of all, like we didn't want to serve anything that was um, comparable to like you know outside. So like we didn't want to serve like nasi lemak, or we didn't want to mm. serve like wonton mee, or we didn't want to serve like you know ali olio or like you know because the generic stuff. Because that's what like you know many cafes would have done, oh. and we also don't like the fact that you could actually compare it to something you can get somewhere else. That's like if you sell nasi lemak, it's like people is going to bound to compare you to some mm. guy outside, right? Mm. So that was the direction. Malaysian was. Partly because my chef back then was good in cooking Malay food. Oh. So that became the direction. Uh. So essentially with what we had, we, we, we knew the flavor combinations of Malaysian. And essentially, Southeast Asian fusion, that was the, the direction. Yeah. So it could be all over Asia, essentially. Signature dish slash signature drink. Back then, uh. Now also can la. la. back then, right? What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. How the fuck people go order now? Yeah, yeah. Like, but some of, some of my things I actually changed la. So oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, some of the things I actually took out. Back then, like, my first dish that like, I sold like a ton of was South China Sea, which is the salmon with eggs. I think oh, probably I've had yes. it before. Yeah, then this drink called Rose Honey Milk was like ridiculous. The one, the, the flower on top. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. like just literally rose, like organic honey and like German rose. Like, Com- milk also? Yeah, milk. and milk, yeah. That's basically it. That's fucking good. I remember. Yeah. Makes it's, you take, feel like... It's like honey oh. stars, like, kind of like drinking. I like honey stars. You know, like you're drinking the milk at the bottom of is the bowl. Is it the frosties, is it? Yeah, maybe like any cereal that has like sweetness to it and then you drink Ooh, the, damn nice, the damn balance nice. of the milk mm-hmm. at the bottom. Oh, yeah, 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 it kind of yeah, gives yeah. you that feeling. Like. No, yeah. it also feels like your mom made you like warm milk with sugar yeah, yeah. honey type feeling. Like oh, nostalgia. Yeah, it's like yeah. yeah. Frosties. Yeah. Kind of reflected our whole like theme, like, actually, that, oh. that, that drink. But the drink is still there, right? Yeah, it's still there. Is the food is the salmon egg still there? No. no. Oh shit! You move. Yeah. It changes a lot. Like every year, you per annum, you guys change the. I menu. try to change it. Like I will reshuffle almost every year. Like, try to oh. reshuffle every, every year. Yeah. I see. I see. I see. Yeah. That, but that means you have to like change supplier and everything. Uh, or you not really like just change. Yeah, just change the dishes that. Like I normally try and move it around, uh, but I don't completely change it. Maybe like thirty percent shifts out and thirty percent shifts in every year or so. How is the decision made between you and your partners? Or is it like... So, one, two, juice. Oh my wow. <laughs> what the fuck? So actually, like, our split is, like, quite easy. Like, Ken deals with kitchen. I deal with everything front of house and general operations. So oh. I deal with general operations and then anything to do with kitchen is him. So he makes the decision for kitchen. Oh. Yeah, and I do... I make front the decision house. for everything else. Yeah. 
Oh. Easy. Yeah. Just like yeah. you get top scope. Yeah, they can. Now, which can? <laughs> which can? I'm confused. That's a younger yeah. can. So, 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 no, so the, uh, like towards uh, probably the middle of like when Merchants was about three years, four years old, then we decided we needed another partner because if not, we couldn't expand. So at that point in time, we still, we still had Chaplang. So then we wanted to open, we, we took over Dungun. Mm. So that was the third place. Oh, Dungun was pre- previously owned by somebody else. Right? Yeah, yeah. So no, we actually bought over an existing cafe and rebrand and re- re-renovated oh, the whole see, thing. So we bought over that location and was basically going through the whole renovation. And then I was like, Actually, physically, it's like I I believe you. It's it's there's a limit to how much how many businesses one person can run. Yeah, I, I believe it's it's a physical limit because you don't have enough time. It's just fundamentally that. So, I told Ken we needed a new partner. Like, and then at that point in time, Ken wanted to move to Ipoh. Huh? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Because he 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 was going to get married and then wanted to move to Ipoh. So I was like, just me, right? So and my other part, my other partner is sleeping. So there's the three of us in the beginning, right? So Ken and me and my sleeping partner. So then we had two outlets and one constructing. Yeah. Right? So I was like, I can run three, right? Three is a bit too, too much. Yeah, yeah. So I told him we need another partner. So that's that's how we it's like how Kenny came into the picture. Oh. So my fourth partner came into the picture. Because yeah. Kenny I think was working at Chapang at the time first. Yeah, so when he transition. when he started we we basically put him in charge of um just running operations mm. in OUG. So um, that was the the first the first part of it la. So, because it was easier and he was new, so yeah. like we thought like okay, you just run this, then we start like that. Yeah, so he came into the picture long, <coughs> which was good. Then after that, because he's used to it after doing all that. Yeah, I see, I see, I see. Smaller place also like it's easier to handle and True like, stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, hey, a bit backtrack, right? Yeah. How did you get the funds, right, oh. to, to start the business? If you don't mind me asking, <laughs> this, I don't know whether private. This, this, like, which bank it, you it's, go? It's, it's not. It's not private at all, like, honestly. But like, I think a lot of people might be, might be wondering the same thing. So I think if you want to start a business, this is my opinion, like, right? You, right? Everybody has different circumstances, right? So I think. I'm lucky enough because, like you know, I my my parents don't depend on me to do anything, yeah. right? So they don't need my money and they won't die without me, right? So I started it, like I had this conversation with my partner about merchants by then, uh. and I was like, okay, let's do it. So <laughs> at that point in time, I'm like, <laughs> nice. I'm like, okay, let's do it, right? So there's three of us. So then we talked to the designer, talked to the contractor, right, and then. He was like, okay, so our then we you know planned out a spreadsheet on like the budgeting and the cost of essentially opening this place, right? And then I said like, okay, let's go. I had no idea how was I gonna, how was I gonna actually look for the funds. So our budget was in the beginning was like five hundred thousand, half a million dollars for the cafe, which was you know kind of a conservative number at that point in time because there was a lot of structural work that needs to be done. So you have to headcount, you have to hire, you have yes. to. Yes. So you need like running expenses, you need all kinds yeah. of things, right? Like, and then you run running capital, especially like in the first few months, right? So like between the three of us, we're looking at between 150K to like 200K, like, right? Percent, for okay. for the 500,000. 500, I agreed and I had no idea how I was going to find the money. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the truth. And I now I believe that, you know, if you, so how, how I actually found the, the starting capital. So I, I did save from the beginning when I was uh-huh. working part time. I probably saved about like, you know, 20, 30,000, uh, uh-huh. right? Which was a you know, substantial amount in my head, but obviously not enough, <laughs> right? So, and then, so the natural thing is I went to my dad. So <laughs> I, I went to my dad, I was like, you know, can I have like, you know, 150,000? <laughs> Not your everyday conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went to my dad. It's like I want to start a business. He was like, "Great, can I have hundred fifty thousand? Wow. Yeah. My dad said no. Oh. Yeah. So he's like, no, but he gave me like a lifeline. He was like, for every dollar you find from someone else. I'll give the same dollar. That's what Whoa, he said. Yeah. That's fucking good, bro. Yeah, it was, your father the So brand. he's like, if you can convince somebody else that your idea works and they are going to be willing to give you money to fund your idea, I'm going to give dollar to dollar. So if you find 75, you get so, 75. Right. Right? So I needed 75. Right? Oh, okay. So I was like, okay. Now, now like, you know, there's, there's, there's a way Burden out. somehow reduce. Yeah, yeah. So like, there's a chance, right? So the next thing is like, I went to my brother. <laughs> I was like, yo, bro, like, 
I made 150k, man. My brother, you like, what the fuck? So my brother's like, no, I don't have 150k, you know, like, I'm like, I know, but like, I need 150k. <laughs> like, so you bullied your brother? Yeah. Nick is such a chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear to God, he was you like, are the bully in the fucking He like, shit. he actually like, you know, he checked and he like, he tell me like, okay, you know what, I got like 20, right? Like, it's like, okay, like, <laughs> I got like 40 now, bro. Like, you know, take 20? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, got 20 plus my 20, that's like 40, right? That's, that's somewhere closer. So then my brother gave me the idea, he's like, oh, you go ask your aunt. Right, so I have an aunt in Australia. Uh. So they usually very supportive on that. So I wrote an email to her. I was like, "Here's my idea. I'm like, here's what my dad says. <laughs> so if you give me, if you give me every dollar you give me, my dad's gonna give me the other dollar." <laughs> so I convinced her in some way. I structured out a very like rough plan of like like split equity so she actually owned a part of my equity in a like a proxy oh. form so I, I did that la. so that I said like okay look here's the here's the proposal right like I'm gonna start this thing and basically you own my share of this business la. so kind of like that informally just like you know between me and her and then she was like okay huh yeah. so how much she gave so she gave me, she, she gave me the, the 50k Right, wow. and then on top, of my brother's like twenty k, so she can give me fifty five lah. So that about right. So then my dad had to come out to seventy five. <laughs> He's so, probably like fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but of course, when you 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 make deals like this, yeah. you obviously would say either like you said, you own a share, yeah, or you there's a way of paying back of sorts, right? Correct. So, so I I did put that in writing as well. So I was like, um, you own the share proportionally, so. My dad's share will be mine, no? right? So my dad's money is technically my share. Mm. And she technically owned nearly half, la, right? So um, I told her, like, if I do eventually want to buy it back, it'll be at this price, which is double of whatever she put in. Mm. So uh-huh. I'll buy back at... So every dollar you give me, for uh, I will give you two. La. So I eventually obviously bought it back. La. So within, you know, the first, like, two years or so, Oh. Yeah, we're lucky lah, obviously. But um, at that point in time, we were like, in the beginning, was kind of like really a struggle lah, to be fair, because we under budgeted. We end up spending maybe like closer to eight hundred thousand. We were owing suppliers. It was ridiculous. Like, I didn't have salary for like a couple of months. Like, <laughs> yeah, but anyways, like you know, that that was the whole process. So I kind of feel like you know, if your idea is good enough, you can kind of always find the funding. And the solution. Yeah, yeah. There, there will always be a solution because if not, it will seem always too far away. You know I mean, like, everybody has goals and, like, you know, like, things that they want to do. And then you always stop on your first excuse. 100%, yeah. man. So, like, for me, it's like, you'll never be ready. At that point in time, I wasn't ready at all. But I just said, like, okay, okay. I tell my partner, like, okay, like, I want, like, 30% of this business, right? I was watching, actually, one of your YouTube videos where you yeah. were saying how, like, I think one of the key elements in life itself, right, is to actually just own a business. Because when you do it, right, yeah. that's when you really like have to fucking put your neck on the line. Yeah. Then after that, you really have to do whatever it takes already. Yeah, you then are, you become maximum resourceful already. You are in it and like there's no escape. So fucking is them hard call, bro. Like knowing that you cannot leave is the biggest burden of a business mom, of a business owner essentially. Like you can't say, you know what, you can't one day wake up and like, you know what, fuck it, I'm leaving. There's no such thing. A lot of you, things. You can't, you can't do that. You know I mean, like, your employees are going to be dependent on you. Yeah, lo. Right? And essentially, the business and everything that runs along the business is on you. You can't leave. You know what I mean? And that is the biggest lesson you can learn. And I fundamentally feel like, even at that point in time, the beginning was tough. I feel like it was definitely going to be worth it. Like, for me, the flip side was like, I owe somebody, like, you know, 100,000 ringgit, right? And my, my logic to that was like, if I can finance a car, I can finance this 150,000, right? True, true. So I think people overthink a lot of things. Although circumstances are always a bit different mm-hmm. here and there, but fundamentally, if you can afford to take a car loan, why are you not willing to take the same risk for a business that you can eventually also pay, pay up, back. pay back in, in, in some way or some form? Right? Arguably, it earns you money also because the car, you don't earn money after that. Yeah, so like, I think the risk is, the risk to reward is like, obviously the business also can bleed you more, la, yeah, right? No. Yeah, of course, that's that, but the car can't, but to a certain extent, the risk is minimal. Let's say you put in 100,000 and then you bleed extra 50, right? Then you become, you owe somebody 150,000. Like any normal person with like a, a reasonable like drive would be able to pay back that money 
over the next five years, next ten years, whatever that time frame is. Like, don't you think so, right? Like, I think that one is a mentality thing yeah. because I know a lot of people they can't even pay off two k. It's possible, but like, yeah. if if it's a if it's a big enough drive for you, I think the the you would have started the election. Yeah, the, the outcome is no matter how bad the outcome is, like I owe hundred hundred fifty k. Is it that bad? Were you prepared for like the worst case scenario yeah. of that? Like, your auntie might hate you, and yeah, your dad yeah. also like you owe him money. So like between the both of them, I'm like, I'm damn certain. Look. Whatever money you give me, I will at least give you back dollar to dollar. Uh. You give me time, right? So like, what's the worst? I go work corporate job. I start paying that back, back them like monthly, right? I see. Was it like for me? It was very little risk for me to do that. Like, sure lah. The next five years, ten years, I'll be financing this loan, lah, right? But <laughs> the lesson learned would be far more useful or beneficial to me. That's what I felt, lah. Because of the education rather than the monetary gain. Yeah, yeah. I see. You learn so much from a business, lah. It's mm. Probably something difficult to explain, but it's a feeling, lah. They yeah. it's a feeling, break the bro. Comfort zone, yeah, yeah. It's a feeling, bro. How did you break your comfort zone? I I, I guess it was the, when you say yes. I yeah, I, I think that <laughs> that one was scary, yes, bro. And I think the most difficult like period of my period of the 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 business like journey was when I realized like when the business didn't make enough money, and I had to pay my employees. Mm. Because if I didn't pay my employees, they would leave, <laughs> and no. my business is also screwed, right? So that was like the moment of realization that I actually have a burden on my shoulders, like a real one. Not about not about money, not about anything. You see, you're just talking about people, people in general. Like without you paying their salary, they actually have no money to eat. You yeah, know what I mean? mean? That's fundamentally it, right? People want to, and some people like think that this is like, ah, oh, yeah, it's nothing to do with me. But like, it is at that point in time. If you have people under your payroll, you have that burden. But that's, that's the thing, you know, Ken. I think right. There are a lot of good people in this world, but at the same time, there are a lot of bad people. You know, there are people right who don't give a fuck also. Right? You also will know this type of shit, one, right? If you're in this industry also, right, you will know the polar opposite one. Right? Yes. The fucker will be like, "I'm not paying them, lah. Fuck it, lah." Yeah, not my problem. Ah, uh, a lot of people say like that. Yeah, there are going to be people like that. That's why it's fucking scary also because you maybe people are afraid of either finding out what type of person you are at yeah. that point, or they're just afraid of paying back that loan. Right? Yeah. Right, because yeah. even I myself, right, I will be like straight up. I'm fucking terrified to put money into this type of thing, right? Because yeah. for me, right, I'm a stable, like, fuck it, I corporate or I work for my mom. Just earn the salary. I just like keep quiet, you know, put money into investment, yeah. live a comfortable life. But it's so hard to like break out of that mold. You know? Yeah, like to me, right, Poigi, right, doing his own thing is like, oh my god, mad respect. I He's don't know how. Actually, similar to anybody running a business. <clears throat> yeah, the way own own business. Yeah, right? yeah, it's fucking hard, dude, to yeah. do it. And do do fast, also, like chop do his studio. I'm like, wow. Bold man, it is a step that is difficult to take lah, and nobody will ever be prepared for. I fundamentally feel that, and like, for me, it's like there's, uh, there's many ways to kind of progress. You can be the bad guy, like I think you know, like Steve Jobs, for instance, would be an example, right? Like, he treated people like bad, yeah. and his his argument was, oh, I bring out the best in people, <clears throat> right? But for me, I think that's actually a way where you can grow. By not using that method, right? Like, oh, hundred percent. Yeah, you, you you could grow with honey, right? Not not True. just like you know like vinegar, right? Oh, wow, yeah. that's such a. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first. <laughs> yeah. that's, I mean, like analogy wise, that's actually true. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. true. But I think that generation is a bit different. Also, that generation is more of like I'll pound it into Tough you. love, la. And okay. it's very rare you find people that are of a good mentor figure, you know, yeah. that coach you, that tell, that understands, right, that maybe different people are motivated differently. But that's actually very true, yeah. Right, because mm. some people are motivated by encouragement versus some people are motivated by, like, negativity. You really have to push them on. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I think good leaders nowadays can differentiate, but some of them are, are like, set in their ways. It's yeah, damn yeah. hard for them to, so they, like, be Steve Jobs, oh, fuck it lah, yeah, everybody lah. I, I agree, yes. actually. Like, good leaders actually understand people and yes. what drives each and every individual because it's all different. It's, di- yeah. it's different. But a lot of people don't understand that. Like, yeah. It's tough. I need to go back to the business a bit. Do you got a question? No, later, later, later. Okay. You just continue, continue, continue. Okay. Uh, I need to go, I want to go back to the, the segment, right? Because I remember last time we had this conversation about uh, testing different markets. Yeah. Because last time you were saying how you did uh, Chaplang, then you did Merchant's Lane, then you had Dungun. Yes. And I asked you how come you own three? Why you do three for what? Oh yeah, yeah. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, I think like Chaplan and Butter and Beans was obvious. It was a neighborhood place. So the next obvious um, step was doing something more commercial, more like my target audience will be a wider target audience, right? 
So that's why we did. We can't. We can't knew we need somewhere in KL. Like most people could go highly dense, right? Rather than a neighborhood place, right? Mm. So we did neighborhood. We realized that there is a lot of, like you know, problems with this being like capturing a small market segment, right? Which is the neighborhood market, right? And then that's why merchants was the obvious next step. So there was also the other choice of you know going commercial like in a mall, right? There was mm. also a possibility, but. We basically did merchants because we liked the location, so we we took, we, we took the we took that right. So we did it to a certain extent. It was you know successful, and then I think the the next one was Dongun, which is like a business setting, right? Like you do office, the, huh? the office crowd, right? Like like purely just that. So I think I kind of like I like what I do is because of the drive right i enjoy this like you know this this and drive and learning. like learning and trying that's what i would like like see what i can do right or what i fail at right like mm. i think that's important to me so dungun was like purely office so we had like three different segments like so i haven't actually fulfilled the, the mall part of, yeah which i didn't i haven't actually had the opportunity to do that yet which might happen but <laughs> yeah eventually right so um <laughs> Yeah, so like that, and then like wildflowers was also obvious because um, we from food to drinks, and then bar was the next thing. So selling alcohol, ah. I see. So I see. I, see. I kind of like always try to do something different every single time. So I, I kind of like learn something every single business that I open, ah. True. Yeah. True. I and think mall is the way to go, bro. Yeah, I mean it could be, but COVID has Not proven that. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah. Bro, yeah, man. Not yeah, many times. Fuck everything up, lah. But uh, you know, whisk. Yeah, Whisk has been doing pretty good. Right? Oh yeah, but yeah. like three locations, uh, three or four, uh, I think. Because last time I remember when I went, it was in DC Mall. Then I was like, who the fuck's going to go to Whisk? DC club, Mall got Where people, right? I think uh, got people. Yeah. Because my ex boss Winky told me, hey, you should go try Whisk. Quite good. Now like, but he's in DC Mall. Who the fuck goes there? He was like, I go there. I'm like, okay. Wow. Okay, and there's people oh. going there. Yeah. <laughs> because he lived there for a while. Then he moved. Right. Yeah. So I went there. That was quite good. Now they have one in fucking gardens also, bro. Oh really? Yeah. I, th- I think they have one in Mount also, is it? Ah, yeah, yeah The yeah. one near the Kambi Ramen. No? Yes, yes, yes. Then one is, the the, the gardens one is uh, opposite Jai Grocer. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's quite sick also, the coffee is pretty, mm. it's pretty decent. They have been, like, quite a long time operator, I think. Yeah, I don't know how yeah. the fuck they do it, but I think it's a franchise start thing now. Already, I have huh? no idea. But it's mad, bro. I don't know how the fuck they expect. But they have this, like, unique 1950s mad man feel when you go inside. I think I... Something you know what I mean? like that, yeah, like yeah, diner, yeah. almost mm. diner, almost like Dungun upstairs floor type thing. Yeah, yeah, almost, a little bit, yeah. Almost that same feeling. Yeah, I've never been yeah. to Dungun. Quite nice, like Jay Whis, it's quite nice. I've only been to Dungun like twice. Because like I only had meetings with like UNICEF there like a couple of times and I'm like, hey, Ken is right here, man, mom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, coffee, man. <laughs> it's just like, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. It's like office area. It's called Dungun because of Jalan Dungun. Yeah. I, I just realized that, you know, at the time. Yeah, because yeah, like you, uh, UNICEF office is in Jalan Dungun. They're like, I'm so familiar. What the fuck? <laughs> then go there, I'm like, oh, oh, oh what do you? <laughs> it was Starbucks there, so. It's probably the least creative name we ever came up with. Uh, yeah, to Doesn't be need to be. Uh, yeah, because because of the, uh, we, we didn't mind it because it was not a very unique offering anyway. We were just trying to. Hit office, huh? Yeah, try to cater to whatever was there rather than like, you know, from the outside. But that was the bitch in half because I found out, right, when I went there, yeah, it was closed because I went during the weekend. <laughs> then I'm like, Motherfucker! I wanted to take photo in a nice retro setting. Ma Chao yeah. Hai, it's fucking gross. Then I was like, Ken, what the fuck? He's like, hey, it's only open weekdays, bro. I'm like, Office hours. Office hours. <laughs> oh, Around the fuck. Audience, bro. Around yeah, yeah. Man. Actually, the whole building is so close. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, aircon close, everything close. And that, that was why, that was one of the biggest, like, like, that's what we learned like, after, right? Like, the restriction of, like, centralized air conditioning, right? Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. And, like, you need, like, like to deal with a full like, like proper building management because it's owned by PNB, so it's like like you have to comply with a lot of things there. Like you couldn't even sell pork because like PNB no, don't allow it. Wait, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? There's even that restriction in the contract. And then like if you want to do your own aircon, you also need to apply and then wow. see whether you can put here, you can put there. So even if you want to do it on your own, it was a nightmare to go through the whole process. We learned that over time. That's why we sold it up. Yeah, we sold the business like, eventually. Wow, yeah. that's fucking crazy. Mm. Yeah, a lot yeah, of people man. don't even like think about all these kind of things. Yeah. Right? I know, uh, cause I know a guy that's opening a pizza place in Arcadia. Right. But he's changing location because of that also. 
very very yeah. there's a lot of things that people don't really think about like you know like it's, it's sometimes when you pass by a place like ah, they should do this they should do that but they but don't know yeah they don't they actually don't realize that it's like there's a lot of restriction like you can't sell alcohol in a, this random row of short lots because they don't allow you to right short lots yeah, it, could, it could be yeah Oh, fuck. Based on the the landlord or just yeah. So like sometimes it's curated, mah, right? So mm. they they only want a certain type, like like House Scott Garden kind of came to be, right? Like they they became they a drinking place. Time. The whole place is like you know kind of like became the whole image of the place is terrible, right? Because of what? Because of the drinking? Because of all those like dodgy bars that's in there, right? <laughs> bro, dodgy is yeah. still there, bro. <laughs> no, no, actually, my dad told me it's not different now, right? No, there's one bar. If you go inside, it's opposite that Coco. <laughs> One week oh was the last time you went. Ex- two weeks ago. Experience guy, huh? Ah, went there. <laughs> my friend stays at Scott Garden. Oh. So sometimes I go there, which is she makes the best Vietnam food, right. by the way. So there's still that one dodgy bar right there. <laughs> yes, the voting eyes. Only five clubs there. I don't know what that bro, but I'm just say I was at one dodgy bar right there, and I I saw a few hot girls going. In. I'm like, something doesn't smell right, like, you know? Doesn't smell yeah. right, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't smell right. Doesn't like. smell right, indeed. Yeah. Well, I've smell only been right. there like once or twice, but my dad told me it's damn good. You should go to Catalan. He said when you go there, right. Confirm what's spend. Right? Yeah, yeah. Nah, like, never be sure. No, it's cheap, bro. The stuff there, good. I don't know. I somehow always doubt my dad's taste until I actually do it. Like he always tells me go I O I more. Then I'm like, fuck you, lad. Like, I'm not going I O I more. I go I O I more. I'm like, what the fuck? Feel like I'm in Singapore, bro. What? Seriously? Uh? Yeah, I hate I O I more, bro. No, I've always gone to I O I more. Where's last time you went I O I more? Three months ago. Oh, sorry. You just go. Serious. It's you know, a new says, wing, is it? You know what? When you smell right and you close your eyes right, and you ask, hey John, where are you? Famous, famous. I said, like, I can't tell, lah. Am I in Singapore? The smell smells like Singapore. Oh, they they revamped the whole mall, right? Yeah. Chicken rice is it? No, because I was looking for directions. I think I was like looking for some like anime figurine shop or some fuck like that, right? Or Auntie Anne's. I forgot what I was looking for. Then I asked the directory. Then I was like, wow, this place is damn modern, right? Then I was like, sorry, uh, uh, do you know where is this place? Uh? It's like, oh, this is the old wing. That's the new wing. I'm like, this is the old wing? Uh, fuck me. We go new wing, Langit Atas, bro. I've been to the new wing. Uh, it's quite nice. It's quite nice, right? I haven't ever been. She goes, it's quite nice. Outside, still look like shit. Uh. Yeah, is, yeah. Does, is there still a lot of Indian people there? Wow. No? It's not racist if he says it. Yeah, yeah. it's not racist wow. I'm saying. Actually, actually, last time I go a lot of Indian there. there there's a lot of Malays there, actually. Um, yeah. Okay. Which I, I find quite shocking because it's Puchong. Puchong is a mix. It's quite mix. Yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah it's that mix. You would like assume Puchong. that I more is like mega Chinese. No. No? No? I would assume Mid Valley and Pavilion is mega Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> and one you. Yeah, and then yeah. the Malay one probably IOI put IOI City at Putrajaya. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That one is quite heavy. Major Malay. Malay. Yeah, and then the Indian heavy. one is New Central because we are just beside Brickfields. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, yeah. lah. Okay. <laughs> but recently I've been going to Lot 10 a lot. Fuck Lot. What is there in Lot 10? What's there in Lot 10? Boy, yeah, everybody here, you all need to get in that lock 10 life, bro. What's it's that? fucking sick, man. This is the guy in the back ocean. <laughs> <laughs> bro! What's in lock What's 10? What's in lock 10, bro? So you know, one was like, bro, if you talk to the older generation, they always say like, hey, lock 10 is like a go-to place last time, when you know. Yeah. Bro, I've been to lock 10, right? Like three times the past week. Bro. What's there? I don't know. I was like, you can go lock 10. Uh. Then Jen's like, why? I'm like, I don't know. I just go Isita, you know, walk around Japan store. Then she's like, get out, go out. Then I'm, go there. Then I'm like, why are we here? Then you pay parking 10 ringgit, like, oh my god, why are we here? Yeah, other than Isita, like, what's, like, what is there? Actually, uh, the ramen is pretty good downstairs. There's this place called uh, Ta- Tabushi Ramen. It's pretty okay. decent. It's damn cheap. It's like 20 ringgit for ramen. Damn rare. Okay, yeah, yeah. number one. For number two, days. there's uh, Momo Paradise. Fantastic. Have you ever been to Momo Paradise? No. I mean, there are one at Kapong also, but sure. Huh? Yeah. Google that shit. Bro. Google the shit, Momo Paradise Kapong. I don't believe you. Bro. Bro. Bro, have you you all need to go Momo Paradise. What is Momo Paradise? It's a shabu shabu. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Not that uh. Kapong. Oh shit. My man, bro. Oh, can you scroll down? Bintang, it hey, says Bukit Bintang, this, bro. This is Lot, Lot 10, bro. Yeah. Is it? What are you talking about? But that was Kapong. <laughs> Google cheat my feeling, bro. <laughs> what the fuck? Chigo, uh, Momo Paradise. And I also recently went to Juju Yaki. There, there, there. This one, Manjara la, Kapong. Oh, yeah, yeah, Open. yeah. Fuck me. Because I, if I remember correctly, I went here before. Momo Paradise. Uh. Can you click? Oh yeah, he's right. What the fuck? What's yeah. up? <laughs> Fish what the fuck? Pong Why not there? You can go Kapong. <laughs> Kapong quite far. That's in Manjalara, bro. That's damn far, bro. Yeah, that's oh, like a half an hour, 10, 40 bro. minute commitment. Yeah, yeah. Bro. Too much parking. Too, I mean, too much jam, bro. No, actually, it's okay. Bro, the journey Lot to go there like got so it's much construction there. Huh? It's in town, bro. It's, yeah. This is Manjalara, bro. 
Yeah, Where's Mazzarella? It's Kapong. I see the address there. It's bro. further than Curve, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, like, yes, ah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Curve is quite far. <laughs> oh, Curve is quite bro, far. Bro, why are you fucking bearings, bro? Bro, for me, right, the only time I got cheated from address is Sunway Giza. Got one time I got work at Sunway Giza, right? Boom that, bro. I was like, oh, it's near Sunway. No problem. <laughs> it took me, bro. The journey. <laughs> because it's in the uh, It's gym. like... The journey to the west, Giza bro. Giza is PJ, right? Bro, it's beyond K. B. Yeah, B- K- beyond KD. Further than KD. Sunway Giza is further than KD. It's like Mutera further down. Yeah, yeah. 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 KD is Sibay. Like, how far are you, bro? Yeah. Actually, last time, got one damn good prosciutto place there. At, I'm not going there. Yeah. The last time I went to Sunway Giza, I don't know. Oh, yeah, right. Recently, go Lot 10 a lot. It's fucking mad. But uh, they damn smart, you know. You know, right? I think, uh, because in Lot 10, the highest floor is all Japanese restaurants. Then there's like two or three, right? They legit close down, right? I confirm. But then, uh, they still leave it there, you know. What, the clothes? What? They turn on the lights and divide it. So it makes it look like it's still there. Yes, but right. I confirmed they tapped already. That sounds like a dodgy place, bro. Yeah. Some but it's club. quite good, eh? You go to the Japan store, it feels like, wow, damn nice. Or maybe yeah. it's just because I miss Japan. Right? Yeah, it's probably uh, Talking about <laughs> shop, shop closing down and everything, right? So we, during the time the pandemic happened, right? Yeah. How the hell did you sustain yourself in Merchant Lane, bro? Oh, it was, so, it was terrible. Uh. Terrible, uh. yeah. Yeah, okay. everybody... We did a pay cut. Mm. So... So can I also gonna pay cut? Yeah, so... I also gonna pay cut. Obviously, I didn't have a salary at all, but... Uh, <laughs> me too, me too. Yeah, so my employees took a pay cut because um, <laughs> it was necessary. Like, but were they very supportive of it? Or they I think they understood. La, the they understood the situation. I'm mm. like, I don't... Like... Because we actually couldn't... Like, our business models didn't suit the takeaway food kind of Don't like, worry, concept. man. Not many people did, man. Yeah. So, and, and we tried. Like, it didn't make sense to us because if we did that, you lose. we lose more money. So, we just decided, like, if cannot dine in, we are just going to close, right? So, and then everybody take a pay cut. And then, actually, when you when you take into account the fact that, you know, they actually need to pay money for transportation to work and all these kind of other, like, you know. Miscellaneous. Kind of, yeah, miscellaneous, like, kind of, like, cost, huh? cost to come to work. Then it, it evens out and then you stay at home, you actually also spend less money, lah, right? So, 100%. and they, they know our situation and like, you know, we kind of like, we explained our situation to them and then we, we told them like, look, we cannot even open, right? And if we do, you come to work, even if I pay you your usual salary, it will be so like mentally demotivating to kind of like just go to work and like, let's say you do like, you know, 500 bucks or a thousand bucks worth of deliveries, right? It's the rest of the time you're just sitting there. That's yeah, basically what you're doing, right? Waiting for orders or anything like that. It's really just, uh, it didn't make sense for us. La. So, like, this part is like, at that point in time, it was quite simple. La. The We just asked ourselves one simple question, right? Like, did the business make sense to continue or not? So, that was basically it. So, if the business makes sense to continue, you just have to suck it up, la, essentially, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And bear the losses during the closures. And then, if your business makes sense, you would want to continue opening. If your business was barely making it, the obvious answer is to close, right? Because, because it's not worth the effort. Yeah, it's going to cut losses. And you, you, you never know after when you can open back, you still make money or not. Because you were already, you know, barely making money. So, if your business made sense, you will continue. So just suck it up and then we were obviously lucky because, you know, we, for merchants, it was easier because like we have been, you know, we have been there for like six years. You had so. a good couple of years or so, yeah. heavy business on weekends. Yeah, weekdays yeah. also actually, arguably. Yeah. Over the over the six years, we, has been, we have been like extremely lucky. Like business was reasonably good overall. Yeah. That's very modest. Yeah. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> because True. every time I go, yeah. there's no fucking table. No table. <laughs> so that's a very modest answer. Uncle, one time I go, one time I go, I said, he's table. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, mm. it's tough. La. But yeah. I think it's a majority. There's this uh, cafe also nearby my office. Mm-hmm. Bro, they even done six months. Yeah. You, know, high, you know there's this uh, cafe called High Buy? Bye. <laughs> Poorly choice. Poor choice of the name. choice of wood. Yeah. <laughs> but they also serve like local food. They serve like lo- they serve like lo- lopako and all that. Right. GG bro. Straight. Yep. Straight man. Many businesses actually close down, like, to be fair. And sadly a lot of bread and butter businesses, like you know your Thai Chows and all this kind of like like the, the day-to-day kind of like mm. food, like, they actually suffered. Cause fundamentally the whole consumer base has like Gone. They, they, they eat a lot more at home, right? They're spending a lot less money outside. And for me, we were like, because we were that niche, so it's like when people kind of like can come out again, they come to places like mine, 
Mm. So I think we benefit a little bit because of that. So we don't suffer as much as them. Because for them, it's like just generally down, right? For us, it's like, because people cannot go out. So I don't have business. But if when people can go out, they come to places like mine. Yeah, no. yeah. Because they miss the element where like, you can have that certain food you can't prepare at home also, yeah, or correct. it's too mafan also. Yeah. yeah. I always think about that, like, you know, when uh, MCO was going to happen, MCO 3.0, I was like, fuck it lah. Momo Paradise. <laughs> then Jen was like, yeah. Momo Paradise. Sounds that right. good man, Momo Paradise. Bro. Y'all good, fucking, man. After this shit, y'all, when all this is down already, y'all just go fucking more paradise. Then y'all go and say, hey, John, more paradise is quite good. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. It's like four, four and everything. Oh, you know, fun fact, I went to more paradise the four? other day. Then the manager was like, hey, sorry, video. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh. Did he give you any special surprise? No. Fuck. Know. But he, I'm, I'm shocked he saw my video. Like. Shooketh, bro. Interesting, That's interesting. Me. Yeah. Okay, so pay cut. And then you guys close the restaurant for what, a couple of months, is it? Basically, like the first MCO, um, basically the whole period when we couldn't do any dining, I was closed. Then you're still at home? La? Yeah, mostly. Damn. Yeah. It's uh, mentally depressing, actually. I can't do it, la, you know. I can't do nothing, actually. Just yeah. go run, can? Yeah, I, I mean, I can go run, but like, that, that doesn't take up the whole day. Like, I know. I struggle to actually stay at home even for one day. Like wow. this MC was like, oh God, like, what do I, do? <laughs> like I have to do something, you know what I mean? Like, I can't do it. Oh, like. that's why you do the YouTube thing and all that also. Yeah, because I have more time. Oh, yeah. that makes sense. So you see, when I do a lot more other things, it means business is bad. <laughs> so today your year, is your business bro. bad? Uh, your business is closed, bro. Business is closed, that's yeah. why he cannot yeah. is here. Fuck! <laughs> 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 he, he asked me like, are you free? I'm like, yeah, I'm free. Yeah. <laughs> no, because I just asked him yesterday when he... Yeah, be, yeah uh, fuck man. Okay, uh, okay. No choice lah, the other, now, now other, you guests, know. Couldn't, other guests couldn't make it. <laughs> Wait, we should do a switch. Andrew should probably ask. Welcome. Come. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'll switch lah. Because I feel right, I'm, I'm always in the podcast also. Right. So it's, it's good. Hey, why last year I never come ah? Uh? I was sick. <laughs> Sorry to cut you mid through the podcast uh first i would like to thank the patreon members for paying patronage to the patreon a uh, couple new patreon members this month thank you so much if you guys want to help improve the podcast do consider paying patronage to the patreon it will help us a lot two dollars three dollars little amount also to us it means a lot because we do it with our own funds so every little bit counts uh, if you have a cafe or an event space or any other place like you feel like the podcast can do at that location do let us know as well because I feel like we can collaborate we can promote your location and at the same time we can promote the podcast there so I think more viewers more followers why not right uh, third thing is if you want to do an ad with us 30 seconds for 50 ringgit it's going to be in between the podcast so you're going to interrupt people with your ad so people are bound to listen uh, 50 ringgit 30 seconds and your ad is up there forever uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the podcast love you long time <laughs> <laughs> nice, that's where you know you establish <laughs> greatness. <laughs> nice, nice. But then again, when he's talking, nobody else is talking, and people are like, oh, he's not cheap, bro, don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you used to watch Amateur, right? I, I, I used to, yeah. Oh, nice. I used to. Nice, nice. <laughs> back then, now back, no more. Back in the days. Now no time, man. bro. Go bring the manga to school. He probably is good. Yeah. yeah John Everybody, read, I am the mover, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he the is. mover is... Uh, Some call me Shodai, bro. Who's that you girl's the, name again? You're the merchant's lady. Jolene, bro. I said, case Shitawa, but in the context of manga. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very specific analogy. <laughs> so, so uh, I, I, I don't know. I feel like I was, so I was listening in, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it feels like the conversation was very uh, present-centric and very past-centric. Right. Uh, not so much about what your plans are in the future. Okay. Uh, barring the potential move to the mall, uh, right? Yeah. I, I don't know how viable that is at this juncture. Um, so what, what else What else do you want to do? Do you want to stick to FMB specifically? Right, because if your desire is truly to learn, yeah, there are many many verticals outside of F and B. Right, I'm going to I don't know, plastic manufacturing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so I think th- to this question, I think for me, I th- I'm mostly like I would like I think my opinion would change along the way. But for now, I think my I have no plans to move out of F and B because I think it's within my circle of competency. Sure. I kind of feel like I'm reasonably good at it, so I kind of I kind of want to figure out how far can I go. Okay. Right, like okay. in this whole FMB, because FMB is actually quite wide. You could do a lot of things even within FMB. Possibly hospitality, like hotel, something possible, but still in the hospitality and kind of like food and beverage kind of segment. Because I, I feel like I'm reasonably good at that. 
So, I see. Yeah. I see. And it's uh, so it's uh, it sounds like it's a symptom of hey, I, I think I'm I, I think I feel like I'm good at it. Right. Therefore, I'll dive I'll dive, deep, dive yeah. deeper into it. Um, but there is there is no other like passion outside of it. Like I don't know. I think so. Like for me, because I me myself like. I genuinely just like to do, I like to make coffee. I like to drink coffee. Sure. So this, I think I'm quite certain now after like, you know, being in it for like, you know, seven, eight years, maybe a little bit more than that. So I used to think that ah, maybe this might be just a phase, like, you know, I like coffee and then I like making coffee for people, <laughs> right? But some people say that in the beginning, but for me, it's like, I still do. And I think the end goal would probably be, I, I do eventually wish to kind of do a little bit more. I think that's what I'm lacking of. Like, I'm not doing enough for other people. I think that is one thing that I want to achieve, right? Um, so I think F&B gives me that, um, that, that road, right? Or that sure. possibility sure. to give back to society in general. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I think that would be one of the reasons. And I think for me, maybe end goal would also possibly be just working for some cafe, working for someone and not having the responsibility of owning it and making the business decisions behind it. Oh, fuck that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you've come full circle, man. Yeah, yeah. You so I so think... Now you're going to be part-time again. Yeah, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> you know, I want to be in a position where I can just like, Serve you know, just do what I like, which sure. is serving coffee, right? Or making coffee. And then, you know, at, at any point in time, right? I could just say, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. Like, or I want to like take a break or like whatever I want to do, right? I think that that would probably be one of the possible end goals that yeah. I will end up just going back there and doing that. I oh. see. Yeah. But I guess like a, a, a prerequisite or uh, in order to achieve that state, right? Yeah. You're probably going to need like like immense financial freedom, right? Yeah, I think the, the, the freedom to say one day, ah, you know, maybe I'll do something else because I want to. Yeah, I think we had this conversation just now, right? Yeah. So I think this is not... Like some people think it's very far fetched, right? This this idea of financial freedom. freedom. I think firstly money don't make you happy, firstly, right? And I think for me is I think like success is content, right? Being contented. Mm. So if you're contented with your life, right? Honestly I have no advice for anybody, right? Like because I you should be giving me advice instead, right? So or whoever. So I think for me, look, people overcomplicate this whole financial freedom thing. You you could essentially break it down. Like, let's say, for instance, you think you need 4,000 ringgit a month or 2,000 ringgit a month to survive, right? So it's easy to calculate, right? People say, I want financial freedom, but they don't have a number in their head. Mm. I think that's a mistake because I think you should. So let's say you need, you know, 2,000 ringgit a month. That only means you kind of need to save, right, or invest no matter how, however way you get there, right? like somewhere close to a million, right? In the bank, yeah. right? That would give you that 2,000, 3,000 ringgit with a very safe investment like a FD, whatever form of investment you can choose to do, right? And then, but my question to that is that, look, if you have that number already, when you reach that, do you think you would then go and pursue what you actually want to do, mm. right? So that's, that's my question. So, and for me now, as I ask myself the same question, right? Like. Honestly, if I had, you know, basically unlimited amount of money, what would I be doing, right? Yeah. That question I ask myself constantly and, you know, re repeatedly over the years, right? And my answer is the same. I'll be doing exactly the same thing what I'm doing now, no matter how much money I actually have. So, and I think that is a constant reminder for me and it's important to keep asking this question. Uh, so then you know you're on track mm. to whatever that, you know, is the ending of it. That's my thing. Sure, sure. I, I think I think that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like if I imagine myself having that, or achieving that state of financial freedom, odds are probably still won't be happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, right? I'll still be lost. I'll still be like, oh, actually, what the fuck do I want to do now? Yeah. Right. And then, oh, maybe I'll just get more money now. I don't know, right? Whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. But then I guess the the question that everyone will will, will will hit at that point is, how do you find out what makes you happy? Damn. This is difficult, but I fundamentally feel like look, I think. I've also um, said this before, I think. Um, it's not as complicated as what people think. Like, look, if you wake up every single day, you find you struggle to, right, to wake up and go to your job, right, or whatever you do. If majority of the time you struggle, change jobs, do something else. Because would you be able to tell if this is something for the rest of your life? You won't, 
right? But for me, the litmus test is definitely this. If you wake up most of the time being motivated to go and do what you're doing, yeah. then continue doing it, right? I think that is the simplest way and you have to keep trying. If you if you just feel like, oh, you know what, most people will be like, oh, you know what, I can just, I, I can still live with my job now. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. But every day you struggle, you you wake up and like, oh my God, I have to get to work, right? Just leave your job. <laughs> like take sure. a pay cut, right? Like whatever it takes. Because I think people underestimate time. Like time is probably the most underappreciated thing. People have a lot of time actually, especially people you know below thirty. I would probably put it that, right? You have you have plenty of time, right? And just keep trying. Like mm. if you if you find you give it, you know, probably three three months, six months, yeah. and you still don't like what you're doing, leave. And do something else, and yeah. ask yourself whether the next thing is you're more motivated to do it or not. Sure. Yeah, you will eventually find what you know you really like. I believe that's the best way of like kind of progressing yeah. towards it. I guess what people like, uh, and, and I don't know, maybe I'm speaking for myself, or uh, but I, I feel like most people, they will, they're, they're afraid of, of, you know, external judgment, right? Yes. If I leave my job, it's like, oh, you fuck, I'll talk to my parents. Oh, my <laughs> friends are going to fucking judge call me. Right? <laughs> yeah, 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 right? yeah. Or whatever, yeah. Lah, right? So I think that's that's probably what the struggle is like. Yeah. But do you go to work every day feeling like you love your job? Honestly, like every day? Um, I, I, I feel like you know, like at some point I love playing FIFA. All right, I'm gonna be real with you, right? <laughs> and then at some point it's like, my God, no, I don't. So like, and, and that's why I think the key word is majority, right? So is it? I think minimum prerequisite fifty one percent, right? So if like you know half the time you kind of like it, half the time you have no motivation at all, then you can choose at that point in time, right? Like ask yourself, what do you like about it, right? And also, like, obviously, if, like, for me, I'm probably, like, I'm maybe, like, 70%. Sure. I, I, I wake up and I actually want to go to work. Yeah. And that's why I still do, you know, although, like, you know, it's, it's debatable whether I should, like, actually yeah. spend so much time in the place or in my business or not. I'm, I'm a very hands-on person. I enjoy my job. Like, sometimes I'll just, like, I actually just want to do what my employees do. I want to make coffee too, right? Sure, sure. Like, that's, that's what I really like. So that's why I do it, right? So I think maybe 70%, which I think for me now, looks good enough. Like, 70% of the time, I wake up like, I want to go there, right? 30%, I'm like, ah, shit, a bit. Sure. But it's, that's life, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you never get, I think you never probably get 100%. If you do, then great for you, right? Like, yeah. I think the goal is obviously 100%, but, you know, probably on the way there. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Huh. Damn. So I, I actually, like, if I put myself in your shoes, right? Yeah. I think what would keep me up at night is the fact that I have employees. Right. And, like, I think you, you've, you've mentioned this earlier, right? <laughs> yes. like their livelihoods is literally tied to whatever the fuck it is you do. That yeah. you do. I think that would scare me. So I, I guess, um, I mean, per- personally speaking, I want to start my own business as well, right? Right. right? I, want, I want to be doing that full time. I want to be doing, or at least making an impact to society. Mm-hmm. But that's a huge fear I have. Okay. Right. If I have that team or if I have that, like these people that are dependent on me, yeah. I don't know if I can sleep at night. I'm gonna be honest with you. You you wouldn't for the for the first like couple of months at least. Oh maybe God. longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fundamentally God, true. How yeah. many employees do you have, huh? Now I have less. I since I closed Dungun, I have less. I've probably about fifty. Is that is that fifty? Yeah, five 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 zero. I used to have more, probably, yeah, more. <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> the, the weight on your shoulders, dude. Yeah, yeah. And how, how is that like talking to them and saying, hey, guys, I gotta, I gotta give you a pay cut? Oh, trust me, it's hard. Like, trust me. That that is, been fuck, Anyone cry, yeah? That is the most, like, I think, out of, like, my job, right, that is fundamentally the most difficult thing to yeah. ever do. To let go of somebody that when you actually don't want to, Obviously, if the guy is bad, he, he do something bad, like, it's, it's easier, right? Yeah. Yeah. But even that is still quite difficult, especially if they don't do too much wrong, right? And secondly, like, obviously, pay cuts. Sure. Or, like, actually delivering any form of bad news. Lah. And I think my job has kind of become a lot of HR more than anything, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just talking to employees. And that's why I say, fundamentally, there's not enough time if you have, you know, you know, after a certain number of outlets, you actually do not have enough time to mm. spend with you know, each and every one of your employees. Actually. Sure. Mm. Unless you hire like 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 general managers, like, right? <coughs> that's what most people yeah, do, lah. La. Yeah, yeah that's what most people. Yeah. yeah. So is that is that I I reckon that's your the thirty percent of the job that you hate, lah. Yes. <laughs> 
on the day I have to deliver news like that, it, it's not. De- it's definitely not a day I'm looking forward to. I tell you that. Like I'll wake up and like I don't want to go to work. Why? It's because I know I'm gonna to have to need to have this conversation with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, and that's why I say it's never perfect, scary. right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not gonna be like for me at least. I don't see a hundred percent any point in time now, lah. Yeah. Sure, sure. Damn, bro. Yeah. Okay, wait, Hong Ming, I got a very good question for you. Okay? Yeah. So right now we have been listening to all of the things you have done, backhand and fronthand, right? Yeah. I think the thing that we are missing out, right, in throughout your eight years, nine years, right, in this journey. Yeah, about there. What are the things that you had to sacrifice to get to where you were? I like think out of that, I mean, if you, to be to be frank, right, I believe everybody in the world, maybe some majority lah, yeah. will happen. You know what? I think it's time to have a, make a cafe. You know, yeah. Like, it will be like you know what? It's time to do yum cha session cafe. You know? <laughs> It's just yum cha. Okay. Yum cha session. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Missing out the key yeah. point. Yeah. All right. The cafe, you know. So, there's. I'm sure you have sacrificed a lot of things yeah. that we as individual don't see. Yeah. What are those things that you have sacrificed? I think the biggest thing that, you know, I partly regret, is, this essentially, I think my circle of friends, even you guys, you get what I mean. Like, I've known you guys for so much, like so long, right? But. I mean, you. I think since the day I started my own business, See, I really, nice, I really like lost all my connections with. Like, I mean, like, a, like the constant kind of connection. Yeah, sure, I still know them. You know, they're still like, they're still social media. But beyond that, like, I think, especially every like, every time I start a place, I'm just engrossed in it. You get what I mean? Like, it's like my baby. You get what I mean? Like, I'll be there every single day, almost right. <laughs> Even probably the day it's closed, I'm still there, right? So, I think the biggest sacrifice is definitely like just the relationship with my friends or keeping in touch with my friends. I think that is a bit unfortunate that I'm like I've lost contact with quite a bit of people. Sure. Yeah, because of the fact that I'm just overly engrossed in my business, and I, I'm naturally like that. I prioritize like like okay, business first, right? Even my family, including that relationship. Like spending enough time with my dad, it's probably something I want to in the future, like kind of prioritize a little bit more, right? Friends as well. So I think that's the biggest like sacrifice that I believe I had to make. I I believe it was necessary, lah. Right? Correct, correct. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't feel any regret. Yeah. In spite of the sacrifice, right? Like so, if you could redo it, yeah, probably the same way. I I'm, I will probably still do it the same way, but I do kind of feel like you know I will try and remind myself maybe to allocate some. Sure. Some time for it, yeah. I think that's definitely the the biggest one. Kawan, ah. <laughs> hey, but to be frank, man, the last time I saw Kenneth was at Merchant Lane. I think before MCO one. Most of my friends, yeah. I only see when they come to my place. There you yeah. go. Most sure. Actually, yeah. last time I saw Kenneth, oh. I think it's twenty nineteen. Two years ago. When I go running with you. Yeah. Why <laughs> run every day that year? And that's because it's like I can't run. Anymore. Yeah, around if you like once a week, right, probably. Yeah. At the point that. Yeah, I haven't seen him in like, I don't even know when. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know when. I Years. Can't even, I can't even put a, a date on it. Maybe yeah. like. Futsal at some point. Yeah, maybe futsal at some point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe I see you at your parents' place. Ah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. After a run. Correct, correct, correct. Nah, that sounds yeah. more reasonable. That sounds more reasonable. That's probably when I saw yeah, you yeah, last. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah. 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 Sounds about right. Yeah. So you're you're also quite big into this, uh, like like quite big into investing, yeah. into the finance in general. Yeah, I think every I, day I, my report half is from Canon Blue. <laughs> 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 I think mean, you, you were you were into Air Asia for for a good period of time. That well pre COVID. Yeah, yeah. Right back when it was actually sorry. Way way yeah yeah. Well, it was. Yeah. So to be blunt about the question, had, did you get burned by Air Asia? Um, no, actually, because I started early. I see. So I started when I was 21, which is like eight years now. So I bought my first stock when I was uh, 21. I was damn young yeah, dude. Asia was my, actually ironically, Asia is my first stock I ever purchased. Oh shit. Yeah, that yeah. was a good time to buy, right? Like what? That, eight, it was, years ago? It was like, it was cheaper than what it is today. Yeah. So throughout the years, I've continuously just put more money in. I've, it's a, I'm a very boring investor, I call it. Like I just buy, I never sell. Sure. Yeah, as long yeah, as I believe in it. Up. So yeah. I keep buying, I keep accumulating. All right, as long as I believe the fundamentals of the company is intact. So obviously until COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. COVID. All fundamentals were questionable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So the whole airline industry basically went down the drain, yeah. right? And I believe Air Asia the same. They they suffered the same fate. So that was when I decided that I, I think the fundamentals have changed. I'm out. So I did. I sold all of it. I see. So did I lose money? No. I actually still made. Uh, very reasonable amount of money sure, sure. throughout the six years because Asia has been extremely generous in terms of the dividends. Yeah, 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 correct. So, yeah, it's ridiculous like, actually at some point because they were doing extremely well. So, so yeah, they didn't actually get burned, which is, you know, kind of. I see. Uh, and do you, do you only delve into local stocks or foreign as well? So, I used to. Um, I used to only do local for like the first four years maybe. I see. Yeah, because that was the only thing I knew how to do. So I didn't do foreign stocks because I didn't really have enough knowledge or know-how uh-huh. in terms of doing it. And then after that, I, do, I did realize, um, actually very recently, maybe the last two years or so, I'm like, I, I find it extremely hard. When people ask me questions, I, I find it extremely hard to even like explain to people about like companies' fundamentals or like any news regarding any companies that... I do read about on a daily basis. I spend sure. a reasonable amount of time on just reading stocks and investments in general, right? On the companies that I'm yeah, interested yeah. in. So I, I probably spend like two or three hours a day. Oh, just, cool. Yeah, yeah, Fuck, just reading. That's a lot of time, yeah, yeah. dude. So, and for local stocks, like, I find it really hard to find information. Yeah. It's not right. as transparent as what, like, you know, the stocks in the US or in the UK yeah. would be. Because all you have is the edge, bro. Correct. So, like, exactly. And DH is... Literally, yeah. yeah. Everything else is nothing short of garbage. Yes. You can't <laughs> find anything. Yeah. You Even the large caps, like blue chips, you don't find about me buying good thing, you will struggle. I tell you that. Yeah. Right? So, the only information I get is through my broker, which is also, like, you know, old information usually, not very timely. So, that made me make the switch. So, when I saw Asia, I just completely, Went like, ditched, it. like, local stocks entirely. And it's heavily manipulated the local market yeah that's correct, my right. opinion obviously people could argue otherwise but a lot of yeah. the, the the local stock movement is completely irrational right? yes <laughs> it's like yes right one one politician gonna sodomize and then whoa the stock spikes for yeah, a yeah. reason right like, there's no relation to it exactly like yeah. elon Musk and dogecoin like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, possibly sounds like that filler like, you know? but that's what i think about the local stocks and that's why i've completely moved to this solely this um u.s stocks and some Bitcoin essentially, some cryptocurrencies. I see. Yeah. What kind of uh, what kind of companies do you invest? In? So <laughs> foreign foreign companies. Uh, would you ask I'm I'm actually quite boring now, but like so I have like majority of my, my investment in Tesla. Uh-huh. Majority. <laughs> How is that boring? His whole insta is Tesla, 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 Tesla. I'm gonna start this like I cannot. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so majority of my investment is in this Tesla. Okay, okay. What, what price you bought on? Um I bought it. <laughs> that's the a, that's a real question. Right? I, I bought it at about hundred and forty something. Yeah. Fucking hell, yeah. that's dua bro. You yeah. are you are you're really like so top it, of your game right now. Yes, bro. Really. <laughs> <laughs> like so it was a good decision because I swapped Asia to Tesla completely. Sure. At the right time, I I would argue it's about rough, rough, roughly the right time lah. So I was it was so happened that Asia went to the shits fundamentally right because of the COVID. And then because of COVID also, Tesla share price dropped at that point in time and yeah. the whole general market fell, right? So I decided I need to move my, my money somewhere and Tesla was definitely the next company that I want to invest in. Yeah. This didn't because of the fact that there was, it was too risky before that. I actually don't like risk. I prefer buying companies that are expensive that is de-risk. Sure. Yeah, so people could argue like, yeah, sure, you should buy Tesla back then when it was like 50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever it is, right? I would argue otherwise. I still think Tesla is a great buy today because purely people don't understand the fact that, look, share price is high, but risk is low, right? Back then, share price is low, but the risk is extremely high, right? Would you have been able to sit out like six years of Tesla being flat? Would you? So if you if you can answer the question, so I was lucky because at that point in time Tesla turned profitable, and the numbers looks amazing to me. Yeah. So and COVID happened, I spent like six hours a day over two weeks just reading about Tesla. Sure, sure. Right. Sure. So I I saw all my just shares sitting on a pile of money, needed to do something with it because you know I I'm just like that I I like to invest majority of my money in in, in investments, so Tesla was the most obvious thing and I had the most conviction about 
So I mean, fucking good move, bro. I mean, yeah, now, yeah. now you're, they're having a correction and they're still at six hundred sixty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you know, hey, hey, money at one forty is fucking amazing. I, I bought it all the way up, like, Actually, I bought it all the way up, probably up until about six hundred ish. I started, uh, you know, like sure. I, I stopped buying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, it's yeah. questionable. It, it, point, it was yeah. a bit ridiculous at the <laughs> point in time, and then it went all the way to nine hundred, I think, and then. Yeah. Like now retrace back about Actually, 600. Sorry, what, what do you mean by 600, 900? Oh, that's the share no, price of it. Price, price, yeah. price. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, like some people argue diversification. Sure, sure, sure. Correct. I think that's a, that's a debate for you know, another day. Yeah. yeah so I, I just don't believe in diversification. I put most of my money in, in my most high conviction <laughs> investments. Yeah. All in or nothing. Yeah. It's Tesla almost, Tesla. almost all in that. Oh. Like Tesla was like the only share I held. How, how did you how did you get into investing in the first place at 21 I, i'm sure somebody yeah, had to had to teach you about it because you don't it's yeah, like, yeah it's not it's not intuitive right yeah, it's not like oh i'm just 21 not. i just know about it yeah like, it's it not that way. so i think my brother first talked to me about it he's like oh you know i can buy shares through this app sure so the barrier in the beginning was definitely barrier to entry like you need you needed to go to like an investment bank right so you go to like maybank ib like hey you want to open like yeah, investment stock. account, right? <laughs> a stock trading account, and then be like, "This kid, what are you doing <laughs> here?" <laughs> yeah. So it, it's that that is the I think main barrier for a lot of people, right? So when my brother told me about this app, which you could apply everything and the account opening is all online, I was like, "Heck, I'll give it a go." Is it Rakuten? Yes. Uh, so Rakuten just started actually at that point. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I I opened an account within like three days, four days faster than a traditional bank would actually open a, yeah. a brokerage account for you. And I opened the account, bought my first stock. I bought AirAsia was purely because, oh my God, I think AirAsia is a great company. I, like, because I fly AirAsia. AirAsia like, <laughs> <laughs> like, it Dude, sounds like, sounds honestly, great, right? Yeah. That's, that's the, those, those fundamentals alone is more intelligent than 90% of people. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know, this company is just going to grow. I see like one day they're flying to Indonesia, the next day I see now they're flying to Japan, bro. Like, you know, it's, it sounded like they were expanding. There was like huge growth. Like more and more people I see is flying, right? In general, flying, right? Not not only Asia. Then Asia seems to be dominating the whole, like you know, Southeast Asia market, right? Yeah. And it was obvious to me, although I didn't know anything, like when I first bought my first share, right? But that's the, I think that's the biggest lesson. That's why that's why I tell people now, like if you're not sure, put a very insignificant amount of money into it first, and then you will automatically go read up more because your money is in it yeah. no matter how small right yeah, principally you put 500 ringgit in it right your money is in it yeah. you would probably care a little bit more when somebody else talks about it right yeah. or you would maybe like if you even see the news you'd be like oh, you'd probably read it right because you yeah. have some money in it yeah so i think that's the easiest way to start huh. <laughs> yeah, and that's also how i kind of started because the barrier to entry was like, online yeah, right? yeah yeah that makes it a lot easier yeah. correct 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 mm. yeah I just wish somebody told me about this winner. Me too, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I only yeah. found out about this last year, yeah. way. Yeah, what yeah, yeah. the fuck? <laughs> MJ, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Honestly, right? if, Wasting if, my time. If only we learned about this at 21. Un, you know, school should teach us this. It was funny when I went yeah? to Maybank. I opened the Versa account. Yeah. I, you know when you write your date? It's your birth date, right? Then the guy was like, what, 29? Uh, so young. Uh. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Still got chance. <laughs> Still got chance. I, I, I think anybody in this room now open an investment account today, you're early. I got. You're early. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I feel a little bit late, but coming from Canada, I'm early. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have so many years, you know, you get what I mean? Like, yeah, correct, So correct. many years. I think it's just the pressure that we give ourselves saying that it's late already, you know? It's never late, yeah. man. Yeah, it's like, in, in a lot of things, perspective, right? Like, you, you're late, why? Why do you say you're late compared to who? Because right. you're probably comparing with other people. Yeah, right? if you compare to the guy who's earlier than you, then you're late. Lah. But mm-hmm. like, you know, what about everybody else? Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. But okay. I think investment is something, like, I think I said this before, like, it's it's a necessity now. Yeah, I mean, you have to invest because inflation is going, like, at a ridiculous pace. <laughs> like, I, I, I believe that it's going to half the worth of your money every five years. That that's what I believe. Like, cause I, I give this example before. It's like, look at your chicken rice, right? Like, ten years ago, how much did you pay for it? Right? Fuck. You could you could at least remember this, right? Or like your one time, right? Or your chocolate tail. Like today, maybe you pay eight. Last time, maybe three, four, right? Yeah. 
that that is the pace of inflation over the last maybe five years to eight years i think roughly right so that's real inflation right that's like the, the your standard of living right? correct, correct and do you think in your opinion right will it continue to accelerate or decelerate right Right? So printing money like yeah, it's like oh you're out of a job here here's thousand bucks right you're out of a job here thousand bucks right the value of money is kind of like decreasing De- over time right? yeah. so you you like the the traditional thinking of just saving for retirement I think it's it's difficult to achieve unless your your growth of your salary can outpace inflation right correct so if you, if let's say inflation is at 10 15 percent so can you grow your salary 20 percent per year? Right to just outpace yeah. inflation. Can you do that? So it's difficult. It's possible, but <coughs> difficult. Right. Yeah. So investing becomes necessary now. Whenever BNM announces that their inflation rate is like two to three percent, I call bullshit, man. <laughs> fuck you, dude. So like, fuck you, land my face. <laughs> and they they use a very specific financial sure. metric to make it sound <laughs> right PR worthy, yes. la, right? Yeah. 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 If I was BNM, I'd do the same, lah. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So fun fact, actually, my my, my girlfriend owns a Gopi Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. So like a traditional like old school. Uh, Chicken rice, toast, kind of, kind of right. Kopitiam, right? Yeah. So she tells me what her actual raising of prices is. Mm-hmm. It's not two to three percent. <laughs> so for a fucking fact, it's not two to three percent. Yeah, yeah. Insiders. Yeah. We uh, minimum like double digits, like, I think. But I feel it's per double year, digit, double yeah. digit per year. Yeah. 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 Oh, I I feel that is that way, lah. So if <gasps> so fundamentally, if you're not increasing your salary by. 10% per year. Then you, you like are losing. You're going... You get, you're actually getting poorer. Yeah, you're getting poorer, <laughs> yeah, over time. Yeah. <laughs> Perpetually, you're, you're yeah. talking about like perpetual over the your whole lifetime of working, right? Can you? I think it gets difficult at a certain point. Correct, right, correct. Right. Yeah, so investing is necessary. So you heard that, guys, I'm doing this. <laughs> but, you know, you, you, you did this investing, you came out with um, Cafe Merchant, right? Yeah. You didn't have any mentor or someone to guide you. You just did this based on your own initiative. Yeah, mostly. I had like a few, like my old, my ex-boss in Standing Theory was like somebody that has been some like very helpful mm. over the period. And mostly it's just been working with my partners that also has like, we've been, we just, we just started it and then we're like learning along the way. And I think, honestly, everything in business can be learned. It's just whether are you, are you willing to go through it or not. Like, I think my, my philosophy has always been in business, like, don't worry, be scrappy. Like, just do it and then fix it real fast. Like, just do it. Don't, don't wait until the point where you have a perfect plan, right? Or perfect product before you launch it. Once you think it's good enough, do it and then fix it real fast, right? Like, keep improving sure. on it. I think I totally agree with yeah. you. And I feel like that's, that's a lot of things what youngsters nowadays are yeah. finding it hard to follow. Like, oh, they... So much risk or uncertainties, puyao lah, don't yeah. want, you know? Yes. And then they go with your own nine to five job. Yeah. Something like what my girlfriend is doing right now. So, <laughs> is she though, watching? Uh, I, so, okay. I don't know whether she watches or not, but last time when I see something she's not supposed to hear, she watch that shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck did you say? Uh, say it again. <laughs> The, the mistake you just said is girlfriend or fiance. Sorry! <laughs> <laughs> either way, either way, uh, I think that's a really good thing. I, I, I feel like sometimes for myself also, I mean, right now I'm doing my own, sh- own stuff. Like, it's a bit scary, like, you know? Because I have a fiance now, so I have to really get money for her. But there are times where I really have that feeling of the uncertainties and the risk, you know? And then you just have to just say, yeah, like, just fuck it, like, you know? Like, put some cash in and just do it, like, if a lot of time it can come out lost lah, but in the end, just it's just a learning curve, you know. But the, the question is, is the lesson worth the money? I, the, the money is worth very little actually when you complex. come to think about it. Like people spend money on watches, phones, whatever they spend on, lah, right? Like, I, I think spending money on lessons in money. life or business in specific is worth every like. To a certain extent, I would kind of even put like, if you if you start investing, lose some money, right? Because the lesson is going to be worthwhile. You know, next yeah. time you're not going to simply throw money into things that you're not sure about or, you know, have no knowledge about. So I think that, like, yeah, when people spend money on cars and like stuff that, you know, and then they feel like it's a, yeah, it's okay decision. But that's like, it's a guaranteed loss. You know what I mean? There's a lot of things that we spend money on that's a guaranteed loss, right? And the only certainty that it's not going to actually improve your life. But people do it anyway. Sure, sure. So why not business, right? Have the same mindset for it. Just like, okay, go do it. If not, lesson learned, right? 
Do you recommend opening a business to everyone? Business is not for everybody. Lah. I actually yeah. do feel that business is not for everybody. But okay. if, if you do have an intention to open it, I suggest you try it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think if you don't, if you, you can think about as many situations as you want to think about and all the possibilities or the outcomes. Sure. <laughs> you would never actually understand it until you try it. Because mm. I think it's a completely different, like, with, once you're in it, like, knowing that you have no escape is something that it could break you, you know, yeah, it, could, it could break you, but it could also, you know, give you a very important lesson in life, whether or not you choose to continue on that path. It's a different, you know, question altogether, but I think if you want to try it, go try it. You know what I mean, like, I think people, like, for me, it's like, back then it's like, what's the simplest way for me to like get into like a cafe business? I, like I, I suggest to people who want to open a cafe, which has been like, you know, <laughs> a lot. Like this, 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 this thought has <laughs> been on many people's minds, right? Like sure. many people think about it, like I want to open a cafe, maybe, right? Like yeah, kind of yeah, looks yeah. nice, sounds nice. Cafe. Like, yeah, own something, I can go there, my friends can come chill, right? Like if you have that thought, right? Like it's actually not difficult to <clears throat> even try to figure out whether this is really what you want. Go work in a cafe, right? quit your job, quit your 9 to 5, go <laughs> in the cafe. You would at least have a, like a glimpse of whether this is yeah. for you or not. If you can't work on the floor, you can't wash the dishes, you can't do all these things that you expect eventually your employees to do, you, can, you probably shouldn't run the business. Huh? Sure. Yeah, so I think like, it's actually a very low-hanging fruit, right? Quitting your job and go work in a cafe, right? It's not going to kill you, lah, let's be honest, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Maybe it'll take a hit financially, but... You, know, you could actually do it and just go try it, right? Then after six months, you can figure out whether you still want to continue or not. La. That's my thing. Sure. Yeah. So how, how, do you, how would I know if starting a business is not for me? Like what, what type of personality yep. would you recommend this person? Hey, bro, just don't start a business, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Go to corporate life. Right. You're not made for this shit. Right. What, what kind of person is this guy? So I think firstly, Tough. firstly, people are contented. So if you're already contented in your nine to five job, stay there. Why move out of it? Sure. So firstly that. I think secondly is like, if you you have the mindset of like, at any point in time, right? Like, you know what? Fuck it. I want to leave. Business is not for you. Because you cannot leave. Because when you're in business, you can't say that. You know I mean, there's no, there's no exit door or like, you know, yeah. there's no eject seat or eject button. Maybe right? I say that because I can't say it. But yeah, yeah. Right. so but when I you're in business, you know, you can't. You know I mean, like, there's a lot more on the table when you're, where, when you're in business. So I think that is also the second most important thing you should ask yourself. Not gonna lie, I think everyone who works 9 to 5 at some point has thought, fuck it. <laughs> but they're still there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I think a lot of people have yeah. thought of that. So these guys are just, just not meant to be. Yeah. So if you want to say fuck it in the nine to five job, it's because you can, la, to be fair. Correct, exactly. Yeah. And right. even that, they, they struggle to even make that decision of like, you know what, really fucking yeah. it, throwing in your, your letter, resignation you know. letter. Like, if you even struggle to make a decision like that, I think in business, you'll find it even more difficult, I think. Because yeah. you have to make a lot of decisions that sometimes could be decisions that you don't want to make. I'll put it at that, yeah. Worst HR mistake you ever make? Worst HR mistake? Yep, I'm sure there's tons. <laughs> if you hate what you, if, if you hate, like, if, like there's, there's, there's your job that's 100%, yeah. 70% you love, 30% you hate. <laughs> yeah. if, if majority of 30% is yeah. HR, yes. there will be a worst HR mistake. <laughs> Which, worst HR mistake? Interesting question, la, this one. I, I like think this. not spending enough time with people that I believe could grow. Oh, she. Yeah, because I, I, I tell myself I don't have enough time to spend with everybody. But I actually could have. You got 50 people that wrote. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's why you got three partners. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, one, that's why he got yeah, yeah. one. Must can. be a small number, la, right? Yeah. Unless you're hiring wrong. Yeah. <laughs> bro, he got three can, bro. Oh, <laughs> Segregation. Okay, yeah. 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 But like, so I think that's, that's more, like that's probably the biggest, like, and also second, I think second to that would definitely be not getting rid of people who are poison to the the whole culture. How do you find poison? Yeah. How are you like? Cause you got to be sure before you fire the wanker, right? Yes. Right. So how 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 do you how do you be sure? 
Yeah, so and, and that's why I, I struggle. So even if I feel like this guy is bad for the team or this girl is bad for the team, I think my mistake is not not getting rid of them early on. I I, all, I usually let it drag on. To a certain extent, I always feel like maybe they should be given a second chance, a third chance. You, know? mm-hmm. you get what I mean? Like sometimes I do that and I probably should not because sometimes it really hurts the team morale in general. Like if some guy is just like, you know, this sly guy who talks behind everybody's back, yeah, right? Yeah. And you confronted him a couple of times and he still doesn't change, right? It's, it's probably the right thing to go to the guy and have that difficult conversation, right? Saying that I think you're not suitable for this place, go look for something else, right? Because I struggle to do this, I hate doing it, right? Yeah. Mistake. Like, because it actually damages the whole team. It's not worth the... It's actually important to have that difficult conversation. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's just a business yeah. executive decision like yeah, yeah. today. It's, it's not like you want to do it. Have That's to. why I say you have to do a lot of things that you actually don't want to do. Mm. And and that is part of business lah, which is I'm I think I'm weak at that actually. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Can you do it? <laughs> yeah. I I I empathize mildly because I I also manage a team in Shopee. Okay. Right. Right. So same 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 problem lah. Right. You have some wankers who are <laughs> for reason la. just either detrimental to the team culturally. Yeah. Or just shit performers. Which Correct. Which bring down bring down numbers. Right. Yeah. So letting people go is a, is a real challenge. But okay. I think where I struggle with is also with like uh, I guess in a corporate setting you have different. Um, Different constraints, right? Definitely, you have, to, you have to comply to a lot of different things that uh, don't necessarily make sense to me yep. intuitively. So I think like labor laws is a, is a big one. Yep. Right. So labor laws uh, seriously favor the employee. That, not all the time. Yeah. yeah quite like, fucked like, up, like, actually. In a sense. Like seriously skewed that way, right? Yeah. Which I'm 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 happy for because like, I'm an employee, right? Yeah. But as an employer, that's very difficult. Yeah. So how do you how do you navigate that, right? How do you sack someone? It's really not that easy. It's difficult, like. The, the only the easiest way is actually you make them leave it on their own Correct. yeah that's the best if case not scenario. you need two warning letters right yeah <laughs> if not there's no basis to to get rid of the guy um alternatively if the guy do something like really wrong then obviously it's, it's easier sure but there's no way around it other than like like get it like i think the warning letters need to be early and yeah. and like it needs to be done immediately because hmm. then the guy you, you're technically giving a guy a chance but in a very serious or formal method right, right but in F&B it's generally looser than corporate obviously yeah I can't imagine Ken yeah. just like sending two warning letters before you sack the guy yeah yeah so I, I <laughs> usually do not I'm just like usually it's like until like some bad like really bad shit then only I just like I think you better go like the best thing I do is like take your month's salary right and just go yeah, so I usually do that to make myself feel a little bit better. Like I give you one month to look for a job, like, technically, because I'm sure. paying you one month, although you don't have to come to work. Like. Yeah. yeah. So that makes me feel a little bit better. And in the F&B industry, sadly, there's a lot of people that they're they they are also not really aware of what their rights are, blah, 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 right? So some of them who do are a bit pain in the ass because then you have to go through the formal way, right? Correct, like warning letters correct. and yeah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Some people just get it, they leave, right? They take the money and they go, right? And I think in corporate, I think quite different. So I think more people are aware of their rights. Too many. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. sometimes it's towards a, to, towards a point that it's a bit of a pain to the employer. Correct, correct, yeah. yeah. So even for me, it's, the, it's nearly the same, nearly the same. But sometimes you'll be surprised. Like if you talk to people nicely, they do actually get what you're saying. They will live on their own. Yeah. Most people. Uh, Most people would. Uh. Yeah. But then even one one case where, where they cite labor laws. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Ooh, they had, you had that? Yeah. I did, I did. yeah. <laughs> Blame it According to it. Akta Lima Blas. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the, the person I tried to, I tried to cite. My sister's a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> you met with the wrong bush, bro. Yeah. Life, is Life is challenging. Serious. Let's talk about taxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So actually, as a, as a business owner, right? Yeah. I, the way I understand it, yeah. right? You get taxed uh, after after your expenses. Yep. All right. Which is very beneficial in a lot of ways. Of course. Right. Yes. Uh, what are some of the most beautiful benefits of being a business owner? Because we talk about a lot about the dark side of the business, right? Yeah. Mm. HR, my God, right? Whatever. Yep. Right. But then you get tax incentives essentially. Yes, yeah. you so do, how- and every that's why everybody should just open a company in right. general. Yeah. Like you're you're moving in a very grey area, so I call it grey because it's it's technically legal, but you know not right ethically, sure. right? Yeah, so yeah, so and that's why I say like you know if 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 you're smart about it, then go within the rules and then open a business. 
then you essentially get multiple right. benefits in terms of taxation now, which taxations are like you hate paying tax, right? Everybody hates paying tax. So like there's multiple ways of doing it. Like obviously like you could put you could park multiple expenses into businesses that are personal, right? Yep. Which which then lowers the, the taxes. But now it's it get it's it's obviously getting a little bit more difficult as like even to a certain extent, like you know, when everything becomes um, cashless, there's mm. a lot less room to maneuver. I'll put it at that legally, at least, right? So, because everything is once it goes through the banks or credit cards, whatever it, is, it goes through the banks, right? Like it, it gets a little bit more difficult. So, but it's it's still possible. It's still beneficial to own a business and run multiple expenses through it and get the tax benefits for it, lah. Buying a car. Like you know, general sure. expenses. Even you can just park it under the business, and you know it will benefit you, mm. like, Yeah. There's there's a, there's a lot of things. Uh. Pro tip. Yeah. Pro tip. Yeah. Pro tip. So I, I actually wanted to know like like specific examples on yeah. how you would be able to benefit from a tax perspective. So there, there's there's obviously general expenses. Yeah. Like your meals and whatnot. I yep. assume. Yeah. You can park it under meetings or whatever yep. you want to call it. Correct. Right. Yeah. You have your car. That's an obvious suspect. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what others are there that I would like to know? Others. Uh. Yeah. Personal, this self interest driven. Hey, this like anything specific or not la? I uh, don't know. Or any like 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 more large ticket items lah, right? So like the likes of your car. Are there yeah. any other equivalents that I may be missing out on? Like large ticket, not really lah, actually. That's pretty much it lah. Yeah, that that will probably be most of it lah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Other than that, let me think. Is there anything? I think yeah. car would be the biggest one, right? Car would probably be the biggest. Oh, one. Guess, car would yeah. be biggest. Car would be the biggest one lah. Yeah. Unless you buy a house, say this is a new office. I don't think it works that you, way. You, it's, not, it's not that easy. You <laughs> have to justify a lot oh, of things. Yeah. Okay. You have to justify a lot of things. Car is then. Yeah. Damn. But I think in terms of like business, like look, if, it's, if, if you own the business, it's actually a lot easier, like on your own. Sure. Like, I mean, cash transactions could essentially just not be declared in some way, right? So, but that... That is something that you know technically not legal to to, to a certain extent. Sure. Yeah. 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 But again, gray area. Lah. Yeah, it's it's gray because like <laughs> you know it, as long as like it's not ridiculous, it's probably you know not seen in in, sure. in many ways lah. Yeah. But that that is like you know I, I, do I suggest it not really because it gets a bit messy from like the counting standpoint. So yeah. Mm, so that's not ideal, but you could do it. Yeah, and I think many people do. Yeah. Did you have to learn how to do accounting on your own? Uh, Behind yeah, someone. Yeah, I, I actually have an external external accountant. Oh, Keeps me accountable for a lot of business decisions, <laughs> including <laughs> taxes. Sure, sure, yeah, sure. You'd sure. be like, candy is not profitable. Okay, yeah, yeah. send to you. Accountant. Yeah. Okay, I listen can, to can you. Can I buy this car? No, this car is not justified. We can't buy a sports car to say that this is a business oh, like, okay, vehicle. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, that, that sound, yeah. sound logic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, like there's a lot of things that yeah you could kind of do it, but like actually, and from the accounting standpoint, it actually doesn't make sense. Mm. Yeah. So that guy must know how to. Yeah. How do you justify right? Okay, you do like sales. You need a nice car, is it? Possibly. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. But buying a Hilux is a lot more reasonable than buying a Porsche, lah, right? True, true, true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that that makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. Not uh, I think we can go to the last question. Yeah. Right? Last question. Yeah. Okay. Let's so, what do you have to say, right, to the audience that right, are watching right now, yeah. or, who until the end, right? Maybe to business owners or even young people, right? What are the thing if you really want to own a business? What are the a few things you have to capture within yourself before you venture into these kind of things? What do you mean, like? I have to so it's like if, like, say, I'm watching this, right? I'm yeah. listening to your story and everything. Yeah, I really want to do what you are doing. Yeah. So what are the things that I have to, incite to myself and let go in order to achieve this? I think it's just the barrier of like all the fears that you have because like fundamentally it's just you're never going to be ready I think I don't emphasize I think this is not emphasized enough like you will never find a point in time ask yourself this question right like have you found yourself at any point in time right saying that you know what I'm ready to do this yeah probably not if, 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 (laughs) if you did right it'll probably be too late so, like, have you found yourself saying that I'm ready to do this? And at that point in time, it's like the perfect time for you to do on hindsight. No, right? I usually pay that. Like, oh, fuck. Yeah. So most of the time what happens is like, okay, I'm ready to do this, but usually too late. It's like the opportunity has gone, right? Like, you know, I should have done that earlier. You'll never be ready. So, like, I think just tell yourself that and remind yourself that 
you will never be ready to do or make this jump towards business because it's a difficult one actually it is a difficult one and if you just you know go at it what's the worst that could happen you fail it's not that bad 100 grand loan basically your car loan yeah possibly you could start smaller but you can obviously earn back eventually yeah. if your mindset is right then like you know Honestly, it's it's a very small risk to take, lah. Sure. Yeah, on a longer hor- time horizon, at least. Yeah. All right, just do it, guys. <laughs> okay. Cool. I guess we'll wrap up. All right. Thanks so much, cool. man. Thanks a lot, guys. Comment, you, like, and subscribe. Uh, uh, your YouTube channel. What the crypto? Do you remember you talk about all your stocks and stuff? You wanna. Oh, you post. Uh, what? What's that? Your My YouTube channel. My YouTube channel? I just remember yeah. to go to Wild Channel. I mean Wild Channel Plus. To Wildflower. <laughs> yeah, to all Merchants Lane once the MCO yeah. is over. Yeah, yeah, you help you. this man <laughs> a lot. He's right there. See, once for the staircase, you'll see him at 2 o'clock. So <laughs> like did when he's awake. You know it's him, okay? He's, he'll be <laughs> right the there. Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> yeah, I am yeah. so right, bro. That is the chef table, bro. That's the chef table, man. I remember. <laughs> And now I see wallflowers. Like, yeah, wallflowers just beside the shop. No issue, no issue, no issue, no issue. All right, remember to also check him out. All right, cool. cool. Okay, I need to go shit. I need to go shit? Bro, I was holding it, man. Like, oh, 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 that was like a metaphorical. I need to go shit. In. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, actual. Oh.